which if true would suggest a much bigger number of displaced since the city alone had a population of nearly 500,000 people. While Ramadi has been contested since January of 2014, the city is now almost entirely under control of the Islamic State after a week of fighting, leaving Iraqi officials alarmed and U.S. officials insisting the city was never that important in the first place. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports as many as 700 migrants were feared dead on Sunday after their boat capsized in the Mediterranean, raising pressure on Europe to face down anti-immigrant bias and find money for support as turmoil in Libya and the Middle East worsens the crisis. If the death toll is confirmed, it will bring to 1,500 the total number of people who died this year seeking to reach Europe, a swelling exodus that prompted Europe to downsize its seek and rescue border protection program in a bid to deter them. International aid program strongly criticized the decision. After news of Sunday's disaster, several government leaders called for emergency talks and EU foreign policy chief Federica Magherini said foreign ministers would discuss the immigration crisis at a meeting in Luxembourg on Monday. European Council President Donald Tusk said he was considering calling a special meeting of EU leaders, a summit that Renzi had called for earlier. Meanwhile, Italian and foreign ships and helicopters worked into the night to find possible survivors. So far, 20 28 people have been rescued and 24 bodies recovered, according to Italian authorities. The 20-meter-long vessel sank 70 miles from the Libyan coast south of the Italian island of Lampedusa as a large merchant ship approached it. A survivor told the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, that 700 people were on board, hopeful the ship would save them, move to one side, and toppled the boat. French President Francois Hollande said the EU had to do more, telling Canal Plus Television that rescue and disaster prevention efforts needed more boats, more overflights, and a much more intense battle against people trafficking. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the FBI and Justice Department have admitted to overstating forensics evidence results in court in a way that benefited prosecutors in hundreds of trials over more than two decades. The National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers and the Innocence Project are assisting the agency with an internal review of past convictions, according to the Washington Post. The review is ongoing, but it has so far found 26 of 28 examiners in the FBI laboratory's microscopic hair comparison unit have made inaccurate statements in 95% of the 268 trials that have been reviewed so far. Of the 268 trials, 32 defendants were sentenced to death and 14 have been executed or already died. Defendants who are still in prison are being notified of possible inaccuracies in their trials so they can consider appeals. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. In a landmark 5-4 to four decision issued this Wednesday, the Supreme Court ruled to allow Americans to cram cash directly into politicians' mouths. The ruling, which effectively eradicates former prohibitions against stuffing checks and stacks of $100 bills straight down the throats, ears, and other orifices of presidential and congressional candidates, is expected to fundamentally alter the ways American politicians have large quantities of money shoved right into their bodies. In football music news this week, the 1985 Chicago Bears reunite to record their first new material since the Super Bowl shuffle. The group says the new material will be darker and more introspective than its shuffle era work. And in this week's op-ed pages, a man asks why, if God exists, doesn't he throw us like a really f***ing sweet party? In other news, an increasing number of men feel pressure to accept realistic standards of female beauty. FedEx confirms that more than 600,000 people try to mail themselves each year. And a recovering alcoholic doesn't need friends to have a good time. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype username here is lrn.fm, so feel free to join us there. In fact, you'll usually sound better. Uh, if you could take a break from your 420 activities, you're welcome to join us. I just got back from something that I wish you would have been able to attend. Derek J., you unfortunately were sick uh, and could not go, but there were a surprising number of people who came out to the yearly 420 celebration that happened out front of the state house, literally on the state house steps here in uh, in Concord, New Hampshire. And uh, I was really pleased with how many people came out to this, considering that it was not quite pouring rain, but it was definitely coming down consistently throughout the entire the event. The weather, you think, is the, uh, the the deciding factor here? I mean, there's people listening to this all over the country. Where is the 420 marijuana smoking rally that's held on your state house lawn? Well, there are a bunch of, I think, those things that happen out there. On the there. state house lawn? I, I mean, talk, talk about taking it to the man. I don't think anything like that happens right. anywhere on the planet, okay? Mm. That weather is not the most important thing we're talking about. No, nowhere else do uh, marijuana activists go to the state house. Not even and, in Colorado where it's legal now? And smoke within 40 or 50 feet of I the front door this. of the legislative body. No, it's not even within 40 feet. There's literally marijuana smoking going on within five feet of the That's because you have legislators that come out and do it. Yeah, we did have at least one uh, that I saw legislator participating this year. And it was a different legislator than participated last year. Wow. So that was nice. Yeah, I didn't get a good good picture of it this year like I did last year. but it was It's a- not a picture you share. Oh no! Absolutely, the air, uh, the legislator last year wanted me to share the picture. I made sure to confirm that uh, with him. Okay, Mike, well, Sil- Mike Sylvia, he was out in public, and it was a nice close-up shot. He certainly knew that he was being photographed. Uh, it was all good, and that's a it's a hero it's a hero shot if I've ever seen one. You know, you've got this state legislator in his suit, and he's got a marijuana cigarette. And I don't think he's even a regular smoker, but he took part. Uh, in the festivities. And so today was similarly great. Uh, rain was pouring down pretty much the uh, the entire time. And despite that, I would say there were at least 50 people who were underneath the, uh, you know, sort of huddled underneath this uh, overhang outside of the, the state house. Maybe so 60. Within 10 to 15 feet of the door. Everything within that structure or within that overhang is probably within 10 or 15 feet right. of that door. Yeah. I just think it's really important for people to understand this, that there are armed security agents inside that door that are supposed (laughs) to protect the state house, and that there are marijuana advocates out front smoking an illegal substance on the porch of the of the uh, legislative not the legislative office building but the state house office the state building, house general yeah. court building the one with the gold dome the ostentatious yes gold dome and it's no surprise the. Security guards knew that this event was going to be happening. Oh, it's certainly. an annual event. It's uh, prepared on Facebook. So they had plenty of heads up. If they wanted to stop it, they could have. I would say there was even less of a security presence this year than previous years. Now, you could argue that was also because of the rain. But uh, there was a state trooper who was sitting in his car parked you know, somewhere nearby. And there weren't any troopers inside the building. Usually there's some trooper like standing at the window inside the state house looking out. That didn't happen uh, this year, and the security agents, while they seemed interested in that they were, we could see them with their video camera system, because you could just kind of look in the window standing out there and see what they're watching on their security monitor. They were playing around with their camera and zooming in on us and stuff, but otherwise, you know, that's it. Do you look think at him. He's got a hog's leg. Do you no. think they're told to get video of the smoking activists so that maybe they could crack down on them later? I don't know. I mean, they've certainly, years. they've certainly had video of the activists both chalking and smoking. There wasn't too much chalking that went on today, given the, the wet conditions. Um, I imagine they go back to the headquarters and play like Madden or something and see like, oh, here X here. This is where the <laughs> activist was smoking. And we got to follow that Ian guy. There were a lot if of people If they wanted smoking. to arrest Ian, they would have done it a long time ago. Aren't you currently out on some kind of uh, suspended sentence? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. I've got to imagine that whatever smoking m- as marijuana, as Rich Paul, who was also on, there on the state house lawn, qualifies as a violation of whatever your suspended sentence is. I, I want to know, Mark. I mean, I I can't believe that New Hampshire would be the only place where people are smoking out on the state house property. I, that shows you've with, been in New Hampshire too long. I mean, people used to do the smoke down prohibition on a monthly basis out by the Liberty Bell in, uh, in Philadelphia, Philly. and that was kind of a big deal. It's in the the general vicinity of where city government would be but it's not 
exactly where the legislators are. Right. I mean, you know, taking a sort of symbolic area um, yeah. is one thing. It's another thing entirely to go right where the vermin right. breed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're I mean, right there. I really appreciate the picture you're painting of it, and I think well, it's wonderful. Well, that's because I, it's important. I want that to. I want it to be true. What you're saying. I just know there. Are, you know, there are 50 state capitals out there, and there's a lot of great marijuana activists. There so are a lot of great marijuana activists. I don't know if any of them. First off, you have to think about this. You also have to have the right amount of space in front of the state state house lawn. They they control the parking. You don't control the parking. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to have one of these things at some park that has a great deal of parking, and people can come in. And in some cases, I've seen giant. Uh, uh, events where they have marijuana activism going on, but you're in a park somewhere, and you know it would be impossible for the police to arrest all of you, and they may pick one or two off here and there in some places, but generally they don't they don't bother. This is an entirely different situation. I mean, this is scoffing in the face of Western government. Yeah, and it was actually pretty good. I mean, the, the turnout, I thought, was and, – and I wasn't the only one who felt this way, that we felt like – there were a couple of activists who thought that you know, it might have been half the amount that we had, given the weather. I mean, it, it was pretty bad, and weather's always an excuse to stay in uh, on a day like this. It was also cold, besides being rainy. And uh, no, man, they were – there were it was kind of standing room only up there underneath the, uh, the overhang at the State House. So I thought it went really well. Media came out this year, which was great. We had a uh, television station kind of thing. NH1 is what it's called up here. And also uh, a local newspaper came out to cover it. So Did anyone sing? Sometimes oh, yes. last year there were chronic Christmas carols. I, I brought <laughs> the chronic Christmas. carols uh, and I went and I passed them out after, you know, sort of like halfway done. I started passing these things out. And at that time there were people who were, uh, they were using the megaphones. It was sort of an open megaphone uh, thing. You used to run an event like that. Yeah, here Free in Speech King. Fridays. Yeah, so it was, there was a little bit of that, which happens uh, every year. And so uh, after that, I suggested to Rich that maybe it's time to, after the megaphone thing slowed down, I suggested it might be time to uh, to do some singing. And we did. So it went very well. There was one kind of silly part where uh, we tried to go inside the state house, but it was two minutes too late. They had closed for the day. It was like 5.02. And so, you know, the joke was the stoners are late for uh, everything. <laughs> So, yeah, it was a good time. So you should come out and join us here. You can come to the Free State Project or the Shire Society. Go to freestateproject.org. Uh, Derek, how many of these things have you been to in the past? Uh, the the smoke downs at the State the House? The 420s. At, yeah, I've been to Concord. two. It's a good event. I, I mean, I feel like the only thing that really could have made it better was if it were sunny and twice as many people showed up or three or four times as many. But otherwise, I thought, you know, these. If, it seems like we've got these events down. Like there's the the megaphoning, the uh, the the singing, which sometimes happens in the state house and would have had we not been late today. Uh, but I feel like I, like there's got to be something else we can add. But I don't know what it is. There were even people there selling stuff today. Wow. Well, like, one thing I wanted to add, and I'm sorry I couldn't make it today. I was feeling pretty ill, but uh, I wanted to add some more songs. I love the the singing oh, I know. aspect of um, this. You know, when people get together in large groups for a common cause, it's nice to have like a rallying cry, one that's beautiful and sing songy. And like having song sheets makes it pretty easy with some well known songs. And um, so, what did you guys sing today? We took out the chronic Christmas carols, of course, which yeah. uh, of which I still have hundreds of those uh, song sheets and. Uh, we sang a couple of the carols from the from the front page. Okay, so like uh, drug war cops already. And... Yeah, drug war cops are raiding the school, which of course is always a favorite. <laughs> So, or a Violent Blight, which is a parody of Silent Night. If you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> I love those songs, and they're so well done. The thing that's great about the Chronic Carols is everybody knows them. So mm -hmm. because we didn't have the song sheets for Malvina Reynolds, uh, it, is, it Isn't Nice, yeah. uh, which I know that I would have liked to have done. I know and you Bob Dylan, The Times They Are a Changing. I wanted to sing that, too. These are classics. But would as many people know those songs as they would know no. the Christmas cl the Christmas classics, right? So that's why yeah. I think the Chronic Carols are particularly brilliant mm -hmm. for uh, for protest songs. And anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, just I think if you just Google Chronic Carols, I imagine the song sheet will show up there. But I'll try to pull up a link. We'll post it on our Facebook and Twitter as uh, the 420 edition of Free Talk Live continues. You may add your thoughts in. And what happens where you are? I mean, what sort of event? has transpired today. I know there are a bunch of smokeouts that happen, but Mark says New Hampshire may be the only one at the State House. I don't know. 855 450 free and Skype us at Skype username lrn.fm uh, coming up ISIS. 
Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. The amount of young people being brought up on criminal charges, sex offender charges, for taking nude photos of themselves and putting them online. It's just so sad to see these people having their lives just rolled right over the top of by these prosecutors that want to make it look like they're doing something good, but they're not doing anything that's helping anyone. There's no victim in this case. When you hear the term child pornography, what should come to mind, if anything, should be the idea of four Forcing children into sexual scenes and videotaping or photo- Adults. photographing Adults them. forcing children or somebody... Uh... Even if it's a child forcing another child, it's I think the force is the issue there. If you're talking about a 15-year-old girl voluntarily choosing to take a nude photo of herself to send to her boyfriend or to post online, no one forced her to do that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can dial toll-free. Join us here at 855-450-FREE, and join us online anytime over at freetalklive.com. Check out Derek J's website, thederekj.com. Derek, what uh, will people find when they go there right now? Uh, soon they'll find video of my three traffic court tickets. Which ah, excellent. I, I tried a new strategy, uh, trying to make it easier for people to take on parking tickets themselves. I know a lot of people who get tickets, and then they just pay them. 
Yeah, I'm that's like, no good. Yeah, why would you do that? You know, you have an opportunity to so challenge them. So you don't them. waste your time with these people. I mean, that's they're... why I wanted to make a video showing them how not scary and not time wasty it is. It wasn't that bad, and uh, people can watch that video at thederekj.com. Well, I mean, people are going to say it was a, a waste of time because many people would prefer to do anything besides sit in court, right? That's why people do ultimately pay these fees. And how many, sure. How much? How many minutes? How many hours of time have you spent on this parking ticket? Well, if you add up all three, maybe I would say five hours total. Five hours total. You know, I'd be yeah. happy to pay that five dollars to get out of giving. You know, the being basically well, enforced labor of a dollar an hour for three tickets it would be fifteen dollars. But that's a m- minor detail. Yes. I'm just saying. When you put up a resistance on a regular basis, yeah. the authorities get used to it, and they stopped ticketing me for a while. And uh, why do you think they came back at you? Because they knew they could. Uh, I was in court when they ticketed me the last time, mm-hmm. and they were just recently dismissed, and they cleverly put a ticket on my car while I was in court. So I think that's why they targeted me, is because they could. Now, I know you paid up at the end of the trial, right? Yeah. I wanted to make this as easy as possible. So, like, during the uh, arraignment, I didn't even speak. Anyone could do that. Yeah, that's true. And then during court, I didn't offer any objections. I just let them roll over me. Uh, However they're going to do it, they justify their extortion uh, by asking these questions. Oh, was was, uh, this registration to Mr. Derek and... uh, you know, where was the car? And, and they have to reference their notes and stuff. I just think it's interesting. I, I don't get to see. They, they could just be like, you didn't feed the meter. Now pay me five dollars. But mm-hmm. they actually go through a dog and pony show. They sure like, do. Yeah. And it takes a little while, too. I mean, it's, it's probably funny. a 30 minute trial at, at the least, if not 45. Like I was laughing at him, the prosecutor. And I think he was sort of oh, laughing was Jason at himself. Short, by the way, we should mention this for longtime fans of uh, Derek J's victimless crime spree. You meet Jason Short as sort of one of the baddies uh, in the in the movie. And he was the one who was prosecuting you. Yeah, he's a major villain in the movie. And now uh, he <laughs> was uh, persecuted. I mean, prosecuting me in court for this uh, parking ticket. But we have like a frenemy relationship. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> now, so you did pay up uh, at the very end just because you wanted the whole thing to be easy? Yeah. And I joked, should I give the money to him, the prosecutor? And Burke <laughs> kind of quit back. Yeah. Uh, he said, no, it won't be necessary. You know, give it to the he, window over he there. He said, actually, he said something like, that won't be necessary. He doesn't need it. Right. It felt like he added that in, and, and I don't know. It just seemed like a little jab. I wasn't so, so sure about the inflection of how Burke came back with that. Burke's the the judge in the uh, the Keene District Court, well, who's probably you know. Do you think? Do you think Judge Burke is like one of the most recorded judges of all time? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I've said this before that there's more video on YouTube of Judge Burke than any other. I judge. bet you that's the case. I mean, besides Judge Judy. Or oh, Judge right. Wapner. Yeah. I think Ju- Judge Edward Berg from the uh, the Keene District Court has gotten more video footage than any other judge. But what about one of these court systems that has its own internal... Uh, that doesn't count. If they're do like they put the recording videos in YouTube? everything, that doesn't count. But then he's not the most recorded. Yeah. I don't think that they... Re- recorded and released. Independently have, released. How about that? Okay. Recorded and independently released. I'll yeah. give you that. Because most a rather courts qualified don't have... State. No, most courts don't have their own camera system. The New Hampshire Supreme Court does, but all... All of the other courts in New Hampshire don't have that. I've seen court video from court systems. I mean, well, there's video, but it's it's not necessarily it doesn't have audio. So most court systems, I should clarify, have uh, surveillance video, but they don't actually have you know an open uh, an open mic with camera system. Yeah, in my seemed, experience, it just seemed like a, if I were just some person going in fresh and didn't know how the system worked, it seemed like the prosecutor is the one who wants the money from me. He's the one who's uh, making mm-hmm. these arguments, you know. So why would I pay some window far away? And it just seemed like he was the one who had a personal interest in this. Well, the reason you pay the window far away is for the aura of legitimacy, right? Because if uh, the police in the United States just demanded money from you directly when they pulled you over or something or stopped you in the street, then that would make it more clear that it was you know, what it is, which is highway robbery. And so if they put this court system in between and they have all this paperwork and this rigmarole and the pomp and circumstance and then finally a man in a robe you know, declares that you go and settle this at the window, there's all of this you know, legitimacy factor that is, is brought upon it, at least in, I think, most people's eyes. It doesn't work on, on us because we're sort of through the, uh, 
looking, cla- uh, looking glass on that, I guess. So I have a secret strategy that I'll, I'll reveal to everyone. Like, I want to actually get good at uh, representing myself in these trials. Okay. And so part of that is getting experience in the courtroom. And so if you're going to get good eventually, I mean, I want to just start with square one. And that's putting up no resistance at all. That's just being there present okay. in the room and seeing what happens. Now uh, now I can add in a couple of tricks here and there. I can throw in some objections <laughs> that they're not expecting. And, and you're going to have your chance, too. Oh, I'll have plenty of chances. <laughs> you already and, got another ticket. <laughs> that's right. Well, they're not expecting. Now they've uh, got an expectation for me to not do anything. So anything that I add now is, is going to be gravy. Well, I mean, they've seen you in court before. They know that you've certainly put up a defense previously. I don't know if they're going to expect you to not do anything mm, yeah, okay. from from now on. But uh, nonetheless, man, I think that you deserve a lot of kudos for putting it out there and experimenting with the court system. I think a lot of people really appreciate it. I think they, even though court videos aren't the most exciting uh, footage in the world to watch, there's a select group of people who are really interested in this. Because, and a lot of them, you know, they've never been to court, so they want to know what it's like. Or maybe they have been to court and they, you know, want to look for other approaches and see how those work. That's exactly, really yes, that's who I want to make this for, is for the people who say, oh, this seems a little too scary, this seems a little too time-consuming. And then they you just watch it, see what it's like, and then decide if it's right for you. Well, to be fair, though, it can be scary, right? Like, that's certainly true. The system is designed to be intimidating. And yeah, also- they also saved me for last. You don't see that sort of stuff in the video. Like, they could have made this trial first and maybe not true. wait, but they, they waited for, what, hours while they went through every other person in the courtroom and then took a recess right before me. <laughs> right. They didn't- this is what I'm talking about, Derek J. The, the, just the uh, mind-numbing boredom of being dealing with these people oh, bring a cell phone look at least in new hampshire you can use phones and laptops yeah. in the pews in a lot of states you can't do that uh federal court you can't do that so it's actually not so bad uh, of course the classic thing to do would be bring a book but now you can actually at least in new hampshire if as long as you're not making a bunch of noise with it uh electronic devices are okay yeah. the important thing to point out or one of the most important things is that not only were we there for about three hours i think in total from like 10 to to one basically but so were the parking enforcers. <laughs> so were yeah, so for fifteen dollars, you pulled the parking enforcers off the street off the streets for, for three hours, most of the morning, and both parking enforcers, I might add, because in Keene, New Hampshire, there are two. So one hundred percent of the parking enforcement squad <laughs> was free was parking for three hours in the courthouse for hours. I remember when I was in Concord and I had one of their people on the stand. I said. By now, how many tickets would you have written? And the person said 20. Because and how long was that? In what period of time? It was a couple hours. Okay. Yeah. Toll free numbers. 10 an hour. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts here. This is why not taking the plea deal can have an impact. It's Free Talk Live. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855 855- 955-7866. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. 
So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24 7 to help you we also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder ankle or back you may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you so please call now 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 800-301-2963 you can watch the lrn studio cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm that's cam.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You are welcome to join us here toll-free. The 420 edition of Free Talk Live here as uh, different festivals are likely going off as we speak, uh, essentially across the United States and around the world. Uh, 420, of course, I don't think we explained it before. Uh, Derek J., what is 420? Uh, 420 is an annual celebration on April 20th, uh, marking... A day to celebrate cannabis and cannabis use, um, the, the freedoms that are being, I don't know, regained in the in the world of cannabis. I don't know. There, it's lots of things. The, 420, as I understand it, started as a group of uh, high schoolers out in California who would meet after school at 420 and smoke pot. There are a lot of origin stories for the for 420, from what I understand. Uh, I don't claim to know what the the actual true one is. I could have sworn I just saw the folks from Cannabis Culture saying something about they were involved in the origin. I don't. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't look closely at that that story, but you know, not everybody uh, enjoys cannabis. It's not for uh, for everyone, but certainly a lot of people enjoy a little bit of wine from now and then. So. It's not a bad time for that either. Yeah, we enjoyed some really great wine the other evening when we uh, and had some Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Cameron Hughes. And so, Pinot. Yeah, right? that's true. Um, and in this case, uh, apparently the, the sale is on the cab. So um, that's what we're going to be talking ah, about. Yes. Uh, the, the cab did win hands down as far as... Uh, it was my preference. The, the popular vote at the tasting. But I really have to say that that's probably because the people at the tasting preferred cabs mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, the cab was somehow, as a variant from the mean, uh, more more of a variant from the mean um, towards the positive than the Pinot was. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, anyway, it was really great, and you can enjoy this great cab by simply going to chwine.com and entering our coupon code. And that's, if you click the microphone in the upper left at chwine.com, 
It, you can, you'll have an opportunity to put in a coupon code. That coupon code is FTL. That's FTL as in Free Talk Live. Or it can be as faster than light. I don't really care what your uh, preference is, but uh, it's FTL nonetheless. And you'll enjoy 20% off of uh, many of their best wines and free shipping on the order. So there you go. It's uh, 20% off of uh, their best wines and free shipping on your order if you go to chwine.com and enter the coupon code FTL. I highly recommend it because what Cameron Hughes does is he goes around to the best vineyards in the U.S. and in the Napa Valley, and he buys their overages and uh, bottles them up in his own bottles so you can't tell what really great wine you're getting, but you're getting a bottle of wine that should be $70 to $100 normally. chwine.com, coupon code FTL. Right. You were asking about the uh, wait, what is 420, and I did sort yeah. of speculate as to the origin, but what I do know is that people smoke pot on this holiday. Oh, my, and yes. I'm wondering if that also means that employers and people who disapprove of um, pot smoking would randomly drug mm. test tomorrow. Ah, you shouldn't give people ideas. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's those kind of employers who are tr- always trying to catch their employees in the the act of something. But no, I do want to give these people this idea because if they are the type of employer who would fire somebody for enjoying cannabis on the 420 holiday, then maybe they shouldn't be working there. Maybe so. Maybe it's so. It's not a good relationship. It's Put nice it to leave. There. It's nice to leave your job at under your um, your own terms, uh, your terms rather than somebody else's. All right. Well. If your employer's going to victimize you this <laughs> yeah. way, then they're not a good person. I, I'm not going to disagree that, uh, yeah, I think that as an employer, I wouldn't want, say, somebody smoking pot and then running a large uh, excavator, right? What? What, what? Oh, oh, uh, uh, that's some type of machinery? Construction yeah. machine. Okay. A big crushing machine. I would oh, okay. not uh, want a big mobile metal arm being run by uh, somebody who had just smoked pot. It's if, probably happen, it probably happens all the time. I mean, I've I known so many construction does. guys <laughs> who are smoking weed and drinking alcohol on the job. I mean, it's just... It's a, it's amazing anything gets built. There's sometimes. also a lot of evidence that uh, that smoking weed and say driving yeah. is not nearly as dangerous as smoking weed that's and true. drinking alcohol. I want to make it clear, I'm not advocating smoking weed and operating heavy machinery. I think that's generally a bad idea. I think that yeah, doing anything but, to inhibit your uh, sensory perception uh, and using dangerous machinery is generally a bad idea. I, I'm just making the point that I think that it's a big liability, and as an employer, I would not want that happening. However. If your employee goes home and enjoys uh, s- some wine from chwine.com, um, you're probably not going to have a problem with that. But if your in- employee goes home and enjoys uh, uh, some wine and smokes half a joint, then somehow or another it's time to fire them. I just don't think that that makes sense. I, well, first of all, I, I hope that very few people actually think that way. And if you do think that way, we'd love to hear from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 on this 420 edition of Free Talk Live. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the... the the employers should leave people alone who are smoking cannabis. If they're smoking cannabis on the job, then it should depend on the accepted practice at that particular business and the relationship that person has with the uh, the management. I mean, certainly there's no shortage of pizza places where the entire crew will go out back, get stoned, uh, come back in, and then operate You know, very hot machinery, I guess, at that point. It's not uncommon at all for almost 100% of the people working at a pizza joint to be completely baked. I mean, that's just my experience. Mm-hmm. Not that I've ever worked there, but I've certainly known plenty of people who have worked in those uh, places. I think it would be cool. I've had jobs in the past with like real companies where I have conversations with my employers and bosses about cannabis use. And I thought that was healthy and good and made me feel comfortable uh, in working in those types of environments. I invite others to have those conversations as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And then I imagine eventually it would lead to uh, sharing an experience with uh, with cannabis. Yes. Yeah. So toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. We've got Mac. He's in Washington. And you can bring up whatever's on your mind. Hello, Mac. Hey there. Uh, well, I just wanted you guys to know that uh, apparently I'm a misogynist. Uh, I'm a <laughs> oh. I didn't. I, I didn't know that, but I am. I've been now, misogynist it, so. is someone who dislikes women or hates women. Yeah, like dislikes women, I guess, okay. or thinks that they're inferior to men or something like it's that. It's also one of those terms that's bandied about in order to win an argument. Well, of course, yeah, because why would you why would you consider seriously arguing with somebody once you've established that he's a, a hater of you know a race or a, or a gender, right? I mean, yeah. 
So all you got to do is say, oh, you're a misogynist. Why should I give any credence to anything that you're saying? You know, yeah, of course, I think this, this term's of really no use. And um, in many cases, the term misandry is, is of no use either, um, simply because the person to whom you apply it doesn't believe it applies to them. You have to sort oh, of— Oh, there sh- must be someone out there who would admit to, uh, to hating women. There's probably somebody out there that yeah. would, but to, so, a hey, small percent of the population. How did you get a, uh, called a misogynist, Mac? What is the story there? Well, it, I find myself uh, uh, right now living with uh, with two self-described feminists. Uh, it's a temporary situation. That's a good uh, way so. to get called but, a misogynist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's, a, there's a meme that went around the internet a little bit, around Facebook and other places, Reddit, uh, and it had uh, – a, a picture. I forget what the picture was, but the uh, the upshot of the meme was, "What's more useless than a military man?" And the answer was a military woman. And uh, <laughs> that's awful. That's pretty hard. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Pretty hardcore. But in a way, you know, it's. I mean, I wouldn't agree with the with the uh, characterization of them as being useless. However, there are certain jobs that men are built for that women simply cannot do as well as a man. Do you think that's and, true uh, in the 21st century military? It, well, yeah. it, um, the, it, in the military, yes. Uh, uh, but And we we moved on from there to other occupations. And in fact, what I said to one of these uh, uh, so self-described feminists was, okay, let's say you're in the top of a burning building and uh, you're unconscious. You're discovered by a fireman. Would you rather be a male fireman or a female fireman? Now, I've been, I know Mark is a volunteer fireman. I have uh, gone through about 10 or 20 different firefighting schools, you know, the three-day courses, the five-day courses uh, that always culminate with uh, with you being in a trainer, an actual fire, and you got to put it out. Yeah, but um, and doesn't, the, doesn't a, uh, stand by, doesn't, doesn't sure. a woman's body, I mean, it, there are a lot of women who are way more jacked than I am, right? Like, I mean, I wouldn't be a very good firefighter. Uh, I have all, vir- virtually no weight uh, on my bones, so I'm sure there are women who are in far better physical shape than I. The idea that, you know, that there, it's impossible to use women in some of these roles seems ridiculous, but I guess you could say that on average a man is more likely to, to fit into those roles. Your, sh- your thoughts are welcome here. 855-450-FREE. The vet had them on antibiotics as well as steroids. Nothing worked. The vet had given him a cortisone. The vet prescribed an antihistamine. The vet thought that Molly was just old. Probably three to four hundred dollars every four months. At least five thousand dollars in vet bills. All total, twenty-seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Eight five nine four two eight one thousand. The omega three fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive of enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The ingredients are what the veterinarian said he was lacking. Within two days, his scratching, it seemed to go away. After five weeks, her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. Molly's gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Oh, yes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. You may join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features you'll find waiting for you on our site, totally free. If you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, then please shop with us at shop.freetalklive.com. Again, that's shop.freetalklive.com. You can enter Amazon through the links you'll find there. Free Talk Live gets a cut of what you purchase. But there are some things you just can't buy at Amazon, including protecting yourself online. With Pro XPN, what they'll do is they'll encrypt your internet connection, meaning that your ISP, your internet service provider, uh, the administrator of the local coffee shop, someone who's trying to sniff your Wi-Fi packets perhaps, these people will no longer know or be able to find out what you're doing online once you start using Pro XPN. They just upgraded their software this week. ProXPN.com slash FTL is where you go to download it for free for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android devices, as well as Linux And then once you get connected, you are protected from prying and spying. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use code FTL50 to save 50% off the price of their annual account. Now, you can start for free, but you're going to want to upgrade to premium. Uh, When you do that, you'll get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You do it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but more of your privacy. So why wait? Go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use code FTL50 when you're ready to upgrade to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go back to Mac listening in Washington. Mac, you were explaining to us that you have some feminist roommates and you were called a misogynist can you kind of recap briefly what happened there for our listeners just tuning in yeah there was a meme going around on the internet and it said uh what's more useless than a military man and the answer given was that uh a military woman is more useless and i somewhat agreed with it that there are some things that uh i mean there is such a thing as sexual dimorphism in the human species uh What's that mean? It means men. that it, uh, it, women are two thirds the size of men, and men have a, a much larger shoulder girdle. Yeah, and and women generally have uh, similar lower body strength on average, but yeah. upper body strength they're still. But isn't all lack. of that justifying kind of a sexist joke? I mean, ultimately, those no. it's it's all true that you know on average men are stronger than women, but certainly there are women who are stronger than some men, right? Oh, of course, yeah. I have a I have a friend and his daughter is a uh, competitive power lifter and she at, as a teenager can squat more than I have ever squatted in my entire life 
Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I could bench, I could out bench press her on my worst day. Do you think, Ian, um, that this and, isn't a generalization? Um, I mean, because this yeah, sounds it's like a generalization, a, yeah. and it's you know, it's basically a, a kind of a sexist joke well, generalization that's really is, unnecessary to make, right? Like, there's no reason to defend that particular. Well, there's joke. no particular reason for jokes at all, except yeah. that they entertain right. people, and people have a good time, and some and jokes tend to have a butt of the joke. That's true. Now there's let's no not doubt. forget that this joke included calling all military men who were probably the vast majority of people who shared this, useless, all right? So the yeah, people who were sharing this true. were calling themselves useless and then saying the only thing more useless than us is somebody who can't lift as much weight as we can. I don't think that's right. entirely inaccurate for an organization of people whose job is, to some extent, to carry around a great deal of weight. And I would like to, well, to back up my claim, point out the Washington Times article from January that says, female Marines now 0 and 26 on officer infantry course. What does that Not mean? a single it? woman has passed the Marines officer in infantry course because because it is not set up on a sexual sliding scale. If your gender, your, your gender doesn't matter, and at this point, if your gender doesn't matter, women have not been able to pass it. Well, right. There shouldn't be a sliding right. scale. There should be 100% agreed. Your, your job requires this level of uh, physical ability. Uh, if you can't meet that level, right. then you don't get the job. And it's the same with the firefighters. I mentioned that I had been, I've been to many, many firefighter trainers. And the most mediocre male firefighters were about as good as the very best female firefighters. Man. And as I told, as, as I asked these people, I said, uh, these, these ladies, I said, look, if, if you were at the top of a burning building, you were unconscious, a firefighter came to rescue you, would you rather be a man or a woman? And uh, one woman said, trying to get out of it, one of the gals said, look, I would rather be a woman because women care more about um, about other women. They see more value in other women than do men, so they would be more uh, interested in saving my life. And even that's not true because studies have been done where they show that women prefer the in-group, men prefer the out-group. Men see more value in the life of a woman or a child than they do in another man. Yeah. That is also, one of the problems problem. with having women in combat has been claimed that men will do more to protect them. So I would disagree with that statement. What she's saying mm -hmm. is, is that she would prefer to have a woman because the woman would care about her dragging and bumping her head down every single one of the steps because the woman generally couldn't care uh, carry her. Now, I have a good friend of right. mine. Her name is Debbie, who is a female firefighter, and Debbie can carry your butt down the stairs. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. even Debbie it had happened. a had a different test than the men had. Oh, really? Um, now, now, Debbie is on the outlier of the bell curve as far as female strength, and she could do it. But in my opinion, uh, you know, like it's fine to have uh, have soldiers and and firemen and and airmen that are female that are doing female oriented jobs. But what they're claiming here is is that if you're picking a gender, and this joke is about gender, that the more versatile gender for physical um, for organizations that have uh, physical tasks involved is going to be men. Mac, have you seen right. women and training in the military? Yeah, I, when I, I was just going to say, when I was in boot camp, um, the women, of course, they do push-ups from their knees. They weren't required to do pull-ups. We had one gal what? in our sister company who could do, she could do regular push-ups from, you know, that is That's from great. her toes instead of her knees. And she could actually do, uh, I can't remember how many, but she could compete with some of the men in doing pull-ups. She's a bad mamma um, jamma. There are yeah, very women. few women. Oh, yeah. I was told 1% of tough. the population, female population, can do pull-ups. I don't I've know seen if I've ever seen it happen. I've seen quite a few do it at the gyms where I've worked, she and could. it's always impressive. I you know, I mean, I go and I I, I talk to those those gals. I give them encouragement. I think it's really awesome um, when, when oh, women yeah. can do I, that, I'm, but it takes a lot of work. I'm, I'm far more impressed by a really strong woman than I am a really strong man just because of that genetic difference that we talked about before, that yeah. that uh, sexual dimorphism, as, as it's called. Um, and when I was in boot camp, when we had to do our run, you have to run a mile, a mile and a half. That's the, the fit test is a mile and a half. Um, there was a few women that could keep up with the men on the run, uh, but when we had our gear— not one single woman could keep up with, with the men, not so one of them. Why do you think on the, the run, run the women couldn't keep up? I mean, they should be able to stay close. Generally, what well, you no, find he is— he said that they did generally on the run. No, they the, didn't. He did not the, say that. He the said equipment there, no, he did no. not say that. He said that a few, a few could, yeah. and, yeah. that, and I, that's I a big difference. That has to do with, 
I think that has to do with uh, uh, lung capacity also and the stride efficiency length. of their stride. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The stride length and the efficiency of their stride. I used to be a personal trainer, so I know a little bit about that stuff too. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that has to do with that. And, again, that's sexual dimorphism. That's exactly what it is. And so it, it's like – and she was – one of the gals, she just got really frustrated and said, oh, yeah, well, you're just a sexist. And I said, well, if I'm a sexist, then reality is sexist. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not going to be embarrassed at all about accepting reality as it is. Well, you've convinced that, me. That was our big discussion. I kind of thought you were a misogynist at the beginning of the call, but you've got good <laughs> reasons. Thanks for the call tonight, Mac. Appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Um, I, I'm going to go a little bit farther. I think that um, even women w- – women have often been assigned clerical tasks, and I don't know if this is societal or whether this is uh, – you know, maybe, maybe it's biological. I have no idea whether it's nature or nurture. I wouldn't be able to claim that, but – uh, many times you'll see that sort of organizational skills uh, tend to lie well with uh, women. Um, and, you know, certainly there's guys that can, too. I think the bell cl- curves are a lot closer on this one. But, uh, you know, that's not a poor paying job many times. Uh, you know, I mean, you, research, these things would be why in the world are men cut out for research? This is a largely male dominated uh, uh, culture, but there's no particular reason for it. Share your thoughts with us toll free 855 450 free Zach's in Chicago listening via tune in. Hello, Zach. Hey, how are you? Hey, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead with your thoughts. All right. So I just wanted to bring up something that actually just happened a few hours ago at a public high school near me. Oh. I saw it on Twitter a few minutes ago, and it was this kid was uh, speaking out, and he said, and I'm reading this straight off of the Dean split that they got. He got a two hour attention for this. Okay. He got a what? He said, I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said. What? Um, I'm reading this directly off of the Dean's slip, like okay. the referral that he got. Got it. Uh, he got a two hour detention for this. Two hours. Okay. Detention. Got it. Um, he says, raise your hand if you think George Bush hates slash doesn't care about black people. And then he just thought they to give him a two hour detention because of this. And I just think this is insane that. Yeah, that's crazy. That they would limit free speech to that extent. When did he say it? And um, would you have been det- de- given a detention for saying anything else? Exactly. Is this your high school that we're talking if about? If I would have well. stood up and said, I love strawberry ice cream at the same time, would it have also resulted in a detention? Did you witness this or did you just hear about it on Twitter? All of these questions and more. Um, Stand by. <laughs> we'll come back. We peppered him. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can share your thoughts. There's no free speech in government high school. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.08 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. Antiwar.com reports after the fighting in Tikrit, Iraq turned its attention to Anbar, but seems to be losing ground to the Islamic State in the area. The real losers are the civilians of Anbar, as the UN reported at least 90,000 were displaced in the last several days. Most of the internally displaced civilians were from the capital city of Ramadi and the surrounding area where the Islamic State has been making major gains in the face of a struggling Iraqi military counteroffensive. Some of the people fleeing Ramadi claim the city was all but empty of non-combatants, which if true would suggest a much bigger number of displaced since the city alone had a population of nearly 500,000 people. While Ramadi has been contested since January of 2014, the city is now almost entirely under control of the Islamic State after a week of fighting, leaving Iraqi officials alarmed and U.S. officials insisting the city was never that important in the first place. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports as many as 700 migrants were feared dead on Sunday after their boat capsized in the Mediterranean, raising pressure on Europe to face down anti-immigrant bias and find money for support as turmoil in Libya and the Middle East worsens the crisis. If the death toll is confirmed, it will bring to 1,500 the total number of people who died this year seeking to reach Europe, a swelling exodus that prompted Europe to downsize its seek and rescue border protection program in a bid to deter them. International aid program strongly criticized the decision. After news of Sunday's disaster, several government leaders called for emergency talks and EU foreign policy chief Federica Magherini said foreign ministers would discuss the immigration crisis at a meeting in Luxembourg on Monday. European Council President Donald Tusk said he was considering calling a special meeting of EU leaders, a summit that Renzi had called for earlier. Meanwhile, Italian and foreign ships and helicopters worked into the night to find possible survivors. So far, 20 28 people have been rescued and 24 bodies recovered, according to Italian authorities. The 20-meter-long vessel sank 70 miles from the Libyan coast, south of the Italian island of Lampedusa, as a large merchant ship approached it. A survivor told the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, that 700 people were on board, hopeful the ship would save them, move to one side, and toppled the boat. French President Francois Hollande said the EU had to do more, telling Canal Plus Television that rescue and disaster prevention efforts needed more boats, more overflights, and a much more intense battle against people trafficking. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the FBI and Justice Department have admitted to overstating forensics evidence results in court in a way that benefited prosecutors in hundreds of trials over more than two decades. The National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers and the Innocence Project are assisting the agency with an internal review of past convictions, according to the Washington Post. The review is ongoing, but it has so far found 26 of 28 examiners in the FBI laboratory's microscopic hair comparison 
Mission Unit have made inaccurate statements in 95% of the 268 trials that have been reviewed so far. Of the 268 trials, 32 defendants were sentenced to death and 14 have been executed or already died. Defendants who are still in prison are being notified of possible inaccuracies in their trials so they can consider appeals. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The zebra of the plains is perpetually hunted by a myriad of merciless predators. With no purpose other than to feed monsters, the zebra spends its entire life standing around awaiting a violent death. They are nature's ultimate prey. The zebra paces the earth, patiently going through the motions of life, knowing that at any moment it will end in a sudden shock of pain and brutality. With its black and white stripes serving as an ostentatious beacon to any nearby predators, the zebra whiles away its time before gruesome elimination. Zebra, wait on the pantry shelf that is the African plain before something finds it and, at last, remembers to eat it. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, the 420 edition of the program. You can bring up whatever you'd like, as always, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, you've got Ian. Derek J. And Mark, the only holiday that Ian actually will celebrate on air. <laughs> no, we acknowledge uh Acknowledge is not celebration, my friend. <laughs> well, I, I mean, can acknowledge that people have scabies. How do you... Well, wait a minute. Now, Mark, we've acknowledged Thanksgiving by asking people what they're thankful for. What yep, are you going to do? Eat that. Thanksgiving dinner while yeah. you're sitting in the studio? You trip on track to fam. Yeah, that would be tacky. Um, also, New Year's, I think, is one that we uh, we I don't, we can't celebrate it because we're not on the air at that time. Although I guess in other, another time zone, we would be on the air for New Year's. But in the Eastern time zone where we are, we're done at 10 p.m. Eastern every single day. But what about Halloween? Do Halloween's you, uh, a good one. Do you give out candy during the show? Uh, no, it would be too difficult to answer the door. Right. So what I do is I put out the bowl of candy, and then yeah. every break, go out and sort of refresh it. So, so does, does that count, Mark? Um, it, I, I was talking about on air. Okay. But I think that we... Bring, bring some kids in the studio. Hey, kids. We do Trick talk treat. about uh, Halloween and like sort of... I, like one of the things I like to say on Halloween is is that I just sort of remember back to my Christian school upbringing and how awful it was for some of the kids Why? whose parents... Uh, well, some, oh, they don't celebrate? Some Christians specifically don't celebrate Halloween because it's like the devil's holiday, and uh, the kids will dress up like um, you know devils and those sorts of things. And it's one thing to can't say can they be angels? Well, it's one thing to tell your kid that they can't dress up like a devil, and it's another thing entirely to say they can't dress up like one of the Power Rangers or whatever mm-hmm. the kids want to dress up as these days. I'm not entirely sure. I think superheroes, the superheroes that I liked back when I was a kid are back, I yeah. guess. Let's go back to Zach. He's been waiting patiently here. Uh, he began to tell us uh, about a story at a high school, a local high school there in, uh, wherever the hell you are, Zach. Where are you, by the way? I don't know. Uh, that Downers Grove, Illinois. It's okay. a uh, suburb of Chicago. Zach in Illinois, and you are you an attendee? Are you a pupil, if you will, at this government school that uh, where this free speech oppression happened that you were discussing? Um, not necessarily. I actually go to a school that's right down the road, but I went there at one point. I'm in a weird situation, homeschooling and combining that with public school. Hmm. All right. So your only no- knowledge about what happened is from Twitter posts. Yes, but it is. It's actually a picture of the actual referral and you can see that it's signed and named and everything and the referral says what can you recap that okay um it says uh, in the hallway this kid yelled to a classmate raise your hand if you think george bush hates slash doesn't care about black people and that's something that kanye west said on stage years ago is that right yeah and so that's what's Sorry. on the referral. I mean, what is the, the – I remember when I was in high school, I got my share of referrals. I, I was certainly one of the most written up, I think, in in my school. Which in the smart kid school. Was a gifted school. 
Um, but uh, so, you know, there was normally like the little boxes they could check off, like for what the crime was. Is there a, like a box that's been checked off in this particular one? Uh, no, these these are more open ended to where there's not really a box because huh. nowadays you can get in trouble for pretty much anything. So they they just write it in. Wow, that's crazy. Why would he bring up George Bush like almost eight years after Bush? Maybe he was having a conversation he's, he's about in high politics. school. I mean, so he's what eighteen? He was ten years old when no, there George are Bush some, was. There are some people who sort of pay attention to uh, the political scene in high school. There Dude, aren't very many of them. He's irrelevant. He's been irrelevant for almost a decade. I mean, I'm with you well, there. Actually, but... I think an important, I think an important thing to say is that this was in the hallway, so it's not even yeah, like he was not disrupting class. It, he was disrupting class. It was he was in a hallway, exclaiming to another student his political views, right. and I just it's insane that a, a teacher, which may or may not have an opposing viewpoint, would censor him in this situation where there's well, no way he's oh. disrupting. Yeah, you think I'm... the teacher liked George Bush and wanted to punish this kid? Who for... knows? Maybe she just I likes to stay. Maybe the same thing would have happened had he said Barack Obama or yeah. whatever. Um, so who yeah, knows? And, and as far as the, the motivation for the conversation, it could have been anything. He could have been having a conversation with somebody and then just raised his voice to kind of address the whole hallway, right? Like, hey, raise your hand if you think this. Just yeah, to accentuate my a point, point is George Bush is so over. It would be like being. It would be like saying, uh, do you think Warren G. Harding hated black people? <laughs> Well, I don't yeah, think I don't it's know, entirely um, like so. Okay, so the, um, the the societal Barack Obama asked us to have a conversation, a national conversation about race. He did. When did he ask us to do that? Well, do you want me to get a date for you? He's never sent me anything. I don't okay. Know. Well, he he told the public at large oh, okay. to do such a thing, and so I think to some extent this kid is responding to that by saying that there is a political party or a um, you know a class of people who don't like black people. And I'd say that it is inarguable that a certain percentage of the population does not like black people, right? Um, like, they, I, I've certainly there experienced... There are racists. Yeah, I've certainly experienced those folks. Um, if you wanted to say that there was one political party that was more overtly racist than the other political party, okay, I might go for go with you on that one, meaning that there's a larger percentage of, say, clan members that are a member of one party than the other. Yeah. But I would have to say that any policy that uh, sort of differentiates based on race is racist. So therefore, you can't make the claim that um, there are more racist in one party than the other because both parties make, will be happy to make those uh, differentiations. I think that what this kid's trying to say is, I'm a Democrat. Republicans suck. Well, who cares what he's trying to say? He should be able it's to important. say it. Well, yes. He should be able to say it where he said it. He's in the, uh, the you know the locker area, the hallway of the school, and he just wants to speak and communicate with his classmates. I mean, there's no crime there. Nope. Um, and uh, the fact that this has been a referral, that he was punished with two hours of detention, it really just goes to show it underscores something that I learned a long time ago. I learned when I was in high school that there was no free speech in government school, there was a conversation I had with the principal. I don't remember. I don't remember what I was in there for. <laughs> like I said, I got more than one uh, referral my time there. But uh, there was a conversation where I was shocked. I had asked this principal specifically, you know, what about the Constitution? Because I'd heard about this thing with <laughs> its, with its, you know, right to free speech. And I went over that with this guy, and he basically said, yeah, you don't have a right to free speech when you're on government, you know, the government school grounds. Yeah. Were they talking about in loco parentes, uh, where the, the school becomes your parents when you're there? No, I don't remember them saying anything about that. But uh, essentially, just basically, just totally just came right out and said, no, you don't have free speech, yeah. even though they teach about the Constitution. At least they did when I was in school. They at least went over the basics on the Constitution when I was in school. And they don't adhere to it, and yeah. they're they're right up in your face about it. It's weird that they teach the Constitution at all, like it's ever going to apply to your life. Like maybe when you leave this place, uh, the Constitution will apply. <laughs> well, obviously there are some people who believe that they aren't teaching it anymore, and I imagine in some uh, school districts they don't teach it anymore. But to some extent, teaching the Constitution gives that aura of legitimacy, like we were talking about before with the court system. And thanks, Zach, for your call, by the way. The aura of legitimacy with the, the court system is also backed by the Constitution, that there's this document that some guys signed that actually are probably you know not anyone who are di directly related to you and I. We wouldn't have known their descendants necessarily. Uh, there, there's this document that somehow binds everybody, and it's a, it's a ridiculous concept. You can share your thoughts here. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE.
Ian, the Constitution didn't fail you. You failed the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk to Chris in Phoenix. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, I just have a question. Do uh, you, you guys know that you guys were edited when you about a week ago when you talked about Ed Snowden, about the statue and everything? There was dead air and there was some, some editing in Phoenix. I don't know what happened. What? There was editing. Okay, really? so uh, I think it probably wasn't editing. It was just dead air. Yeah, sometimes things like that happen. It's radio. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't say there's any kind of NSA conspiracy to block out our signal. Just in Phoenix. It's the yeah. It's the only oh. report we've had of that. So I appreciate the the outage report. Um, it, it probably makes more sense to call the radio station and report to them. Just for for future reference to anybody who's listening on the radio, if you hear an outage. Uh, it makes more sense to call the local station. It's odds are there's something going on with the satellite uh, system that they have or some something is broken in their station automation. Those are what are the most common uh, causes of, uh, of, sat of outage problems. It, it was a short outage, like it was uh, from sensor. Um, yeah. Like when somebody cusses and there's like, they cut like a few seconds. Huh. Uh, that's what it is. Well, that would sound pretty suspicious. Maybe somebody cussed. I don't remember specifically during that conversation whether somebody did or not. Chris, thanks for the call tonight. I wouldn't worry too much about it unless you keep hearing it. Uh, 855-450 free. And even then, call the local radio station. They'll appreciate the report. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. 
But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free. Here at 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. The Pocket Power Plus, a source of backup power. So small, you can put this in your pocket. And it also fits fine in your purse or your glove box or your briefcase because it will give you power where and when you need it the most. Uh, these days, we're using so much electricity in our own personal lives with our cell phones and laptops. And like right now, the two of you are on laptops. I've, we've all got cell phones here. And uh, I know that here in New Hampshire, when I drive from one point to another, if I go to Concord, as I did today, and my phone is on, you know, it's not on like airplane mode or something like that. My signal's probably going to be down at least 25% by the time I get there, if not, not your more. Signal, your signal, your charge. No, I'm sorry, my signal, my battery charge. Thank you for that. Um, it's going to be drained pretty significantly. And then on the way back, so that's just going one direction. And then on the way back, I mean, I've lost 50% of my phone's battery without even touching it. Yeah. Basically. And if you're using like some driving or navigating app, forget about oh, it. Oh, yeah. You're going to be down 50% on one trip sometimes. I mean, depending on how far you go and the conditions. But uh, if you've got the Pocket Power Plus, your problem is solved. You can run your electronic devices for hours and even days if necessary. P the Pocket Power Plus can also deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power. It even comes with a full accessory pack with most adapters you'll need, including jumper cables. So you can go and get the Pocket Power Plus for half price by going to PocketPowerPlus9.com. That's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Then use coupon code FTL and you'll save even more at PocketPowerPlus9.com as we go Back to your calls and thoughts about whatever's on your mind. We've got uh, Christopher listening in Florida. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Christopher. Hello. Thank you for taking my call, Jim. I appreciate Hi there. it. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, my thoughts are I, I called in about a week ago, and uh, I still appreciate your intelligent and articulate discussions among you. You don't seem to talk over each other, and you make fine and balanced points. You sometimes even have diverse viewpoints. Uh, one thing I was kind of annoyed at last week, and maybe it's the whole medium of calling in, is after I hang up, you can run interactions. I'm no longer there to counter or defend myself. But that, yeah, that, that is frustrating. The territory, I suppose. Yeah, that yeah, is that's, that's talk is. radio for you. I mean, we do tend to keep somebody on generally if they're, uh, you know, if they're not necessarily just agreeing with us. Generally, we'll stay on a mm -hmm. little bit longer if it's an interesting conversation. We'll stay on. But ultimately, yeah, you're right. I mean, most of the time, talk show hosts get the final word. But the good news is Free Talk Live lets you call in every single night, so right. you can always bring up— There's no other talk show in the nation that—at uh, least not a national one— where you're going to be able to sort of uh, call in the next night or a week later and say, hey, you remember this? Um, you're just not going to be able to do it. Right. Well, I'm, I suppose that means you are, and I appreciate that. Kind of like Shahrazad keeping me on the line as long as I'm interesting and funny. Maybe you'll let me on a little longer each time. <laughs> but uh, here's what happened last time I called in. Uh, we got into a debate as to whether a couple should stay together for the sake of the children or not. And I thought that really did not uh, bear upon the question I was asking. Uh, and some of you said, yeah, stay together for the kids. Some said, no. And I, that's, I, I like that. That's nice that you entertain those differing viewpoints. But the real point is, if you're going across the Atlantic in an airplane, a hot air balloon, sure, if you're dissatisfied, jump into the sea. Uh, don't let the door hit you. But you don't have the right to throw your spouse into the ocean just because you want to upgrade an arm for the And not one of the three of you entertained that that logical point that came to bear on the argument so importantly. I, I don't care if you're no longer interested in the marriage, whether you want to stay or not. That's not what the important point is. You don't have the right to distance or to, to remove a dad from his children. I don't care if you're bored. If you want to stay, stay. If you don't want to stay, don't stay. But you don't have the right to kick the other partner out. And not one of you 
shouldered well, that argument. Uh, well, for one, to some extent, it's a derailment of the argument we we're having pre- previously, and that's not uh, you know n- here nor there. I think that generally we agreed that the uh, family court system tends to be bent away from men and towards women. Um, that there's a right. there's a sexist nature to it that says that women right. uh, are are the better ones to take care of the kids, and many times men are separated from their families entirely while they still have to pay. If you want me to come down right. and give a um, you know what my take on that is is that I shouldn't be required to pay child support for a child that I'm not allowed to see. That's as far as I'm concerned. It's like a movie theater ticket. Um, I mean, if you're going to force me to pay for my uh, progeny, that's one thing. Um, I'm fine with that. But at the very least, if I have to pay for that progeny, I should be able to see them. My, my point is this. You have a 100% undividable access to your child right upon conceptual. Uh, consensual conception. That right cannot be nullified. And as a, you don't get one-seventh right like every other weekend. I don't care how much you're paying or not paying. You don't have the right to remove a father from his child. I don't care if you're bored. What? When a woman says she's bored, the response to the judge should be, so well, but hold on. That doesn't what? make much sense, though. If the if the children, for whatever reason, stay with the female parent, um, and then you want one hundred percent access, means that you want to be able to go yeah, in this I, lady's house at three a.m. Uh, when she might have a boyfriend over or something like that. That doesn't make any sense. How did it? Be- First of all, um, how did it become the lady's house? The father has the right to be with his children. If the woman wants to leave, well, if she has so her own leave. house and she has partial custody, then. That's her house, and that's her private property, generally right? People don't con- generally, people don't conceive, conceive children while living in two different homes. So let's assume— Right, I thought we were talking about like a divorce situation or something he, like that. He is. Yeah. He's, what he's if saying is— If you don't is, want to stay with a dad and a child, leave. You don't have the right to yank the child out of the dad's home. Or you sound like you've got a real axe to grind. I mean, that's the impression I, I get out of you. Going to, is one of you going to defend the right of the dad— to have his child stay with him. Is one of the three of you libertarian? Oh, I, think I don't know. It's defend. really tough. So, like, I'm a child of uh, divorced parents. My dad built the house that I grew up in. And when my parents got a divorce when I was nine, my mom moved out and got a house down the street so that she could be close and they could see me on a relatively regular basis. Um, but I don't think that my okay. dad was prevented from seeing me, except by the, the court. I mean, it, it, why is this so personal to you, Christopher? Why is it important? Uh-uh. That's really you're changing the subject. The dad has a right to his right. child. Well, we wanted to have a conversation. Woman, Thanks for the call tonight. The toll-free well, number mean? is 855-450-FREE. I don't see how it's changing the subject. It seems I agree like with it's you. the same, it same thing. Totally the same. It was about he wanted the house. To, he wanted to uh, you know, barrel in here and demand uh, why we wouldn't completely agree with well, whatever I'll, it was he was saying. I'll and, address what he says. He didn't want to have a conversation yeah, about but, it. So, but my mom just voluntarily gave up the house. I see the point that he's making about, like, well, how did it become his house or her house? Well, they just decide. They just choose, like, all right, I'm leaving. It's worth It's worth it to me to, yeah, to sure. be out of this situation. He doesn't like the gender-based bias to the family court system. Um, We've acknowledged and, that. Right. Yeah. I don't particularly like it either. However, what I would say is, is I do believe that children biologically belong to the mother. Um, what? That's what I believe. Uh, why? Why? Uh, because she gave birth to them. I mean, they're essentially— it takes two— yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a rare circumstance where the children are as close, especially young children, are as close to the uh, father as they are to the mother. But um, you know, some some dads do it absolutely right. Now, um, let me defend what I'm saying here is is that I would also say philosophically that there's no particular reason that a man should have to pay for children, right? Like um, the simple fact that a woman got a sperm donation for her children from some guy doesn't mean that he is obligated to pay for them. In today's legal system, you're obligated to pay. And okay, I think we all understood that going in. But, um, and, and if and if I have to pay, I should be able to see my kids. But I, I, I still think that children belong to the woman. Let's come back with more. You can share your thoughts here with us. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. And you can join us on Skype. Skype username LRN.FM. You can take control of Free Talk Live's 420 edition. Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. 
That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Attention, do you owe money to the IRS or have years of unfiled returns? Are you being audited or receiving threatening letters? If the answer is yes, you need help. The IRS can seize your property and assets, impose fines and penalties, garnish your wages, and even go after your bank account. Don't take on the IRS by yourself. Don't let the IRS destroy your life. Take action now. Call our team of experts for a free and confidential initial evaluation. We've helped thousands resolve their tax problems. Let us help you. 800-261-7073. 800 Two six one seven zero seven three. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. A fully leveled-up video game character marvels at how far he's come, and the milk rushing through a jug handle is having the time of its life. This is the Onion Week in Review. This week, top executives from the U.S. financial sector announce they're about ready to ruin the world again. Representatives from all major banking and investment institutions said that more than enough time has passed since they last caused a major global economic meltdown and confirmed they're pretty much fully prepared to bring about a brand new worldwide financial crisis. We feel like we've given people enough time to get comfortable again. Consumer spending has increased, housing market has rebounded. So yeah, we're all set to go ahead and ruin the global economy again. And in other news, the perfect gift for a local man is unfortunately a gift certificate to Lowe's Cinemas. Mall shoppers look on in awe as a helpless 15-year-old girl is viciously torn apart by a pack of her peers. And a drunk pilot decides to pull over onto a cloud until he sobers up. You will now hear three gong strikes and a recitation of the great chant before being ushered to the hallowed garden. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you may dial in toll-free here and share your thoughts with us about whatever you'd like to talk about. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Bitcoin, the price kind of been hovering around the 230, 250, 220 range over the last uh, few weeks now, it seems like. Uh, has it uh, become more stable, or is it just a temporary occurrence? Yeah, this is the problem with uh, Bitcoin: is, is uh, when it's uh, not stable, people complain it's volatile. When it's stable, people <laughs> it's too <laughs> stable. People are like, it's going down. Like they just, uh, <laughs> I don't understand. When it's stable, there's uh, less uh, less use of the coin, so people are waiting for it to go up or something. Well, I don't know. you can go and get Bitcoin right now. There's still plenty of people using Bitcoin uh, for all kinds of different things. You can acquire yours through ExpressCoin.com. It's the best way to do it. They're fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive, and they're a licensed money services business, so they've jumped through those governmental hoops. You can get your cryptocurrency with money order or check 
All you got to do is go to expresscoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you. And you can also do it from your smartphone via their app, which you can download also at expresscoin.com. Plus, if you use code FTL, like Free Talk Live, you'll get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency of choice because they also sell Dogecoin and Litecoin. Uh, get up to $40 worth of it with no fee at all. Expresscoin.com. Coupon code is FTL. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Nate, listening in Pasco, Washington. Nate, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, gentlemen. Thanks Hi there. for taking my call. Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, um, you know, it's 420, and I think I'm doing about my 18th one here now. So. <laughs> your 18th so. uh, smoking of cannabis today? Oh, definitely. Well, for, uh, no, 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 18th year for 420. Gotcha. Oh. So. It's been, been a long time since uh, I was young. I don't know, like, the origin story of 420, but, uh, you know, I, I heard something about it. it was a police code that they used to call on people that were consuming it in public. Oh, so I've heard that one, too. Interesting. With the- yeah, we started celebrating it from then on till about today. But anyway, um, last year, you know, I became a medical patient and started uh, receiving medical marijuana, and uh, it was a great deal where we actually have uh, an online site where someone will del- deliver to my home at a very reduced price. Nice. Very affordable, very easy for me to get my medication. Medication? Well, the state dispensaries, yes. Why do you call um, it that? Well, if you're a medical patient, technically you're supposed to call it that. Well, why are you a medical myself, patient? I, I use it to treat ADHD. Cool. So... So what are you paying on um, this but, uh, delivery service? What's it cost, and what do you get? What you what's your typical order? Well, the like the lowest is like forty five a quarter. Wow. Okay. So, um, you know, that's not too bad, and it ranges all the way up to like one hundred and twenty. Oh wow! So depending on what the what the grade is. Would you say that the there's a significant like difference? Or, would you say that the one hundred and twenty is almost three times as good as the forty five? Well, see, that's the whole perceptionary measure, I think, that's in this is, like, some people want to be catatonic. Some people want to be, like, for myself, it helps me focus. So I don't want to consume a large amount of THC because that doesn't help me. Right. Um, but for other people, they want to consume a large amount. So, yeah, um, in the $100, $120 range, that stuff, like, one often I, I can't stand up for an hour. And do they <laughs> rate the THC of all of these? I mean, is it just so common that everything is labeled with, like, its percentage? Well, where I go through, they don't rate the percentage on their website, mm-hmm. um, but the dispensary, well, the, the retail stores in Washington State do actually rate a percentage. But here's kind of where I was going with this is that the, the retail stores get way less quality. I mean, way less. And they charge you a ton. As That's compared to of, what, the delivery service? Yes. Okay. Oh, man. Okay, so that quarter that I was talking about for 45 you get an eight. For eighty, okay, less quality than what I would have gotten for forty-five, and that's because Whoa. the state's tax. Now the state now wants to interfere with the medical patient and say, in a year and a half now, legislation is going to pass, and they are going to stop all delivery, all medical person to personal transactions. Oh, yeah, see, this is you why have to grow on your own. Yeah, this is why I had the questions about becoming a medical patient because to me that seems like a sneaky way for the government to create a list. Oh boy, look, we've got all the pot smokers on some list. We'll make it sweet for them in the first few years and then we'll do things like take away their gun rights in a few years. Hmm. It could happen. Right. Yeah, and, and I I'm totally there with you on that there, Jay. I mean, I I have been all about decriminalization and not legalization. Because legalization allows more people to make money than you. Because know, from the beginning, I'm not going to be helping my friend next to me who wants to grow. It's to say, yeah. Well, then go support your black market, Nate. There you go. Well, I mean, who cares if people are making money? The problem usually with legalization is the fact that they cut other people out from no, making money. And the taxes that this guy—you well, hear he said eighty dollars for an eighth. Yeah, that's, that's true. outrageous. Even in places where there isn't legal marijuana, you would think if it's legal, then people are growing it. Totally and, agreed. And it should be cheaper. For sure. Hey. And you know, I don't want to feed the state any more than it already gets. Washington State gets plenty of taxes. Amen. But collect this gigantic percentage off of this, it's not only another sin tax, it's just, it shows, of course, the level that they're going to to make money. You know, and a 30% tax on something being taxed at three different levels, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's probably something very similar in Colorado, you know, um, but I mean, like, 
you know, because I, I think everybody should be able to have any of their drug of choice. No. And this being able to tax and tax and tax and tax and tax, and it's like, you can it's have so it, good. but you got to pay us to have it. Thank you, you Nate, for your call tonight. Uh, Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It is the 420 edition, so I'm glad we're having the conversation. Yeah, and I'm still waiting for the decriminalization of alcohol. I mean, in Philadelphia, where I formerly lived, I couldn't even buy alcohol on Sundays. Is it still that way? Yes. There are still these restrictions. And people think, like, oh, we'll just baby step our way to freedom with cannabis. They're fooling themselves. If you think that prohibition is going to end in a few years, ask yourself when prohibition of alcohol is going to end. It's still going. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Here in New Hampshire, the state runs the liquor stores. I know in some places it's shocking to hear that. Even if they don't run the liquor stores, they um, they turn over the distributions to uh, monopolies that they That's they, true. they pass or out near monopolies. So, yeah, I mean it's the closest thing to legalized organized crime out there. And well, why should it be? I mean that's what it was under prohibition, so it just hasn't changed that much. Yeah, I think that. Uh, you know, once the state gets a power, it just doesn't like to let go of it. Yeah. Uh, there's that old Reagan cro- uh, quote that uh, essentially, I don't know, some government program is a, the, the closest thing that we have to a, eternal life or something like that. <laughs> um, and it's it's really quite true. I mean, to wrest the power of uh, some power from the state, it's, you have to pry each finger oh, yeah. off. And nobody has the desire at some point to pry the fingers off. As you're pointing out here, Derek J., you know, the most people are like, ah, whatever, you know, you can you can buy it six days a week. Why why the seventh? Who cares? Yeah, you know, and it's like no one's willing to go fight over that one. Well, and, you, and there's, I don't know what it's called. I know I never remember it, but there's some sort of economic factor where, uh, somebody is not willing to go and spend the time and the effort to fight these things because it takes an inordinate, an inordinate amount of time and effort to go and just try to change one aspect of some bad law. And then they could always change it back and the they next year anyway. always change it back. And so you spend all this time and this effort, and the state, of course, has the advantage because, well, that's already the status quo. And they can afford to send their, uh, let's say, chief of police guy or whoever to go and testify in favor of keeping the status quo. And he's collecting a paycheck. When he goes to the state house and he testifies about why the war on drugs should continue or whatever, and then you have to take time off from work, you have to take time out of your personal schedule and gas money that you wouldn't have otherwise spent to actually go to Concord and, you know, it's Concord here in New Hampshire or whatever your state house is, Uh, you have to take your time and your effort to do that. They're getting paid to do the same thing. It's totally unfair. Sure. It is not fair. Yeah. Um, they, you know, the, the game is loaded against the average citizen, and people, and then the average citizen will go and argue for it because some of it, yeah, it's just so broken. And but we've never seen anything else. Yeah, and we're not going to until we get enough people in New Hampshire, in my opinion. The whole idea of a sort of a democratic republic uh, like we have here in the United States was was a relatively foreign concept uh, back when the United States got started. And the fact that it has survived, I think, is uh, you know testament to its um, its ability to overcome authoritarian regimes. But I, I don't think for a second that this is the end, the pinnacle of societal evolution. Gosh, something's got to come better. 855 450 freeze the toll free number. You may join us here. Share your thoughts on the pinnacle of evolution. What's coming next? It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com 
By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your product and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us on Skype as well. It's Skype username lrn.fm. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget to join us online. If you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, please donate to the fundraiser that is going on right now. It's the African Satellite Fundraiser. It costs Hundreds of dollars per month to get on the air over Africa, over a good swath of the entire continent. And we're looking to raise $22,000 to do it for three years. Uh, so you can help us with that. It'll help get great shows like uh, like Free Talk Live and dozens of other liberty-oriented shows, including your very own Flaming Freedom, Derek J., yeah. as well as Cop Block Radio and so many more. They don't hear anything like that in Africa. Oh, my. They certainly don't. And in some countries in Africa, it is quite illegal to be gay. So uh, imagine, imagine the... Uh, Frustration that a show like yours might stir up with the government officials in some of those countries. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of fun we can have by getting our signal on over Africa, and you can help us for five, ten bucks, or a thousand dollars, or whatever you've got to uh, to spare. I certainly appreciate it. Go to africa.lrn.fm to learn more about it. As we go to Dave in Montana via Skype. Hello, Dave, and happy 420. Hey, viva, <laughs> viva cannabis. Hey, 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 hey it's. It should be deregulated, taken off the drug list, and uh, to take away the Stamp Act. It should be like uh, 
like tomatoes or, yeah. or, or oregano. To repeal prohibition, as Rich Paul has clarified, that's not decriminalization, it's not legalization, it's repeal. Repealing prohibition. That's the ideal right. situation. Yeah, and, you know, it's the most useful plant, so we know that's not going to happen, man. You know, that that's why they're keeping it away from us. What well, do you mean it's the most useful plant? What can you do with it, it Dave? It will feed you, <laughs> clothe you, house you, make fuel, make medicine. If each I love use, that, I swear to God. If, if each use only gave a thousand jobs, there'd be like 25 million jobs because there's like 25,000 uses for this plant. It's an amazing yeah. thing. And I, that's there's the no doubt about it. You it's changed my life. You mentioned the Marijuana Stamp Act, and I think this is important to, uh, important to point out to sort of the conservatives in the crowd who are like, ah, marijuana's bad. Well, you may have your opinion on marijuana, but it doesn't change the fact that the federal government had no business getting involved in regulating it. In the Marijuana Stamp Act, what they did was say that essentially you had to have the federal government's approval via a stamp, a license, uh, to sell marijuana, and then they didn't issue any licenses. Mm. What they did was... Was an in run around the Constitution, and in, in the in in the way that they had to go and get a constitutional amendment to make alcohol illegal, they did not do that for marijuana, and that's why the federal government should not be involved in any way, shape, or form, and that all these DEA agents are essentially just a bunch of paid thugs working for a gang. You got it, man. Dave, hey, anything uh, else you want to share tonight? Go ahead. Yeah, talking about women and lifting weight. Mm -hmm. My my niece. She's a weightlifter. She got picked for the United States American Olympic team for the 2016 Olympics. Wow. She could, uh, at 15 years old, she could take 165 pounds, put it right up over her head, climb a rope, do push-ups, do, uh, you know, 165 pounds? That's Derek J. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now she's 17. They picked her. They flew her to uh, Colorado Springs olympic training center today she she arrived there today she'll start training she that's why none of these girls are in the military because there's just more accomplishment that you can have in the you know the marketplace for sports yeah. and other things yeah. so why would you want to join the military because upper body strength is just simply more common and less valuable in men hey thanks uh yeah. dave appreciate your call as always tonight the toll-free number here is 855 450 free. 165 pounds is ian and three gallons of milk <laughs> there you go <laughs> latimes.com reporting on a story that i saw the headlines for in a lot of different places i guess some people had their their hopes up about this u.s judge who has decided to not remove marijuana from the most dangerous drug list Efforts to legalize marijuana suffered a uh, defeat in court Wednesday when a judge upheld the constitutionality of a 1970 federal law that classifies cannabis as a dangerous drug akin to LSD and heroin. Like, wh why? It, it, there can't be any... Like, everybody knows that's not true. Why would the judge do that? U.S. Maybe she's a total square. I don't know. U.S. District Judge Kimberly Muller announcing her decision at a hearing in Sacramento said she could not lightly overturn a law passed by Congress. Muller agreed last year to hold an extensive fact-finding hearing on the issue, raising the hopes of activists seeking to legalize marijuana and worrying opponents who consider the drug a threat to health and public safety. The hearing marked the first time in decades that a judge was willing to examine the classification of marijuana under the 1970s. No, not willing to examine. Not a fact-finding <laughs> mission. They found no facts. This is baloney. Under the 1970 Controlled Substances Act, the Schedule One classification is for drugs that have no medicinal purpose, are unsafe even under medical supervision, and contain a high potential for abuse. Yeah, this is the... the, the <laughs> this is the most egregious aspect of this, is that ma the claim that marijuana has no medical purpose when study after study has shown, scientific studies have shown that there is medical value to it. Right. At this point, all that's left is social conservatives banging on a pulpit and a bunch of politicians and bureaucrats getting payoffs. All those people who use medical marijuana to, oh, I don't know, stop nausea from occurring, help them with a variety Glaucoma. of different symptoms of various the, different the, uh, maladies. They're all just joking. It's all just a big scam. They just want to get high. Nobody's actually getting uh, helped. by It's ridiculous. Of course people are being helped. I've seen the examples of friends in my own life. I've, I've known people, and I, I trust their stories. But isn't the FDA a federal government organization? They and are. And hasn't right. the FDA said that cannabis has medical use? I don't know. Have they? 
I believe so. I don't so. think the FDA can um, can reassign it from a Schedule One drug, no, though. No, but the judge is on a fact-finding mission, right? <laughs> so apparently, she would find this easily this- Googleable fact. Well, this judge, if she cared about, um, like, like what she's trying to do is balance a career here, and she's feeling things out. Let's see, what'll be better for my career is if I find marijuana to be medically viable, or if I find that it isn't. Yeah. I mean, this How is courageous! A, this is an right. This is an obvious thing to do. She's sticking her finger in the air and trying to figure out what's valuable. And that's the problem with our system entirely. It's full of politicians and bureaucrats. Oh, yeah. I mean, you you create p- political positions, fill them with politicians. You. Create Create bureaucratic positions, fill them full of bureaucrats, and then you're upset when the people in those positions act like politicians and bureaucrats. They're all lawyers. I mean, judges, bureaucrats, yep, not, politicians. Not the, poli- not the bureaucrats. There are a number of uh, lawyers who are bureaucrats, Certainly. but not most of them. Yeah, it's probably true. But most of the politicians are lawyers, except in New Hampshire. That's right. But, uh, I mean, the vast it's, it's a lawyer-industrial complex. In addition to marijuana, heroin, and LSD, other Scheduled One drugs include ecstasy and mescaline. Mueller, an Obama appointee, announced her decision before issuing a written ruling, which is still pending. She considered the constitutionality of the classification in response to a pretrial motion brought by lawyers defending accused marijuana growers. She was quoted as saying on Leaf Online, a pro-marijuana blog that's been covering the case, quote, At some point in time, a court may decide this status to be unconstitutional. But this is not the court! And not the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> when will it be? When her kids go to jail for marijuana possession? When it, when it gets personal for this woman? I want to know. Is she going to change her mind? I mean, what a ridiculous... I mean, I'm sure whatever her long order will say will be more detailed, but what a ridiculous rationale. I mean, there's no reason in, the, in that. It's just... This is not the time. I will not be the the judge to make this decision. I could foresee a time when this could be considered unconstitutional. Which what does that even mean? I mean, how could she, on one hand, say that it is that it is constitutional yeah. that this set Schedule One, this whole drug scheduling plan that they have, the federal government, she says it's constitutional, but yet acknowledges that at some point it would become perhaps unconstitutional. What it's ridiculous and crazy. This I is hope, legal land. I hope that marijuana advocates remember this. When the government eventually does legalize cannabis, when they mm. do come around and they don't cheer on the government saying, oh, yay, thank you for our freedoms. You know, thank you for being ahead of the curve on this one because the government is always behind the curve. And this proves it. Americans favor marijuana legalization right now today. Especially medical judge, marijuana. Here's this judge saying, now's not the time. Well, she's wrong. Right. Remember, Schedule 1 says these are unsafe even under medical supervision. The suggestion being you cannot possibly use cannabis not only on your own, but while being supervised by medical people. Right. Doctors, uh, lawyers telling doctors how to do medicine. It's, it's <laughs> laughable. But Ian, I think you make an incredibly good point here is that if the Constitution is a, you know, it's a document where words are written down. Words mean it's, something, it's, right? Right. I mean, it's supposed to, how can something be constitutional, um, you know, in 10 years that's not constitutional today or vice versa it's if the Constitution amazing. hasn't been changed? The, the, the sickening, disgusting bureaucrats and politicians didn't change the Constitution to make marijuana illegal. So therefore, marijuana should be constitutionally legal the entire way through. The Marijuana Stamp Act is what's unconstitutional, and this lady, and this lady has no qualification to say what's constitutional or not. Let's talk more about it here in a moment, and you can share your thoughts here on the 420 edition of Free Talk Live at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam. My best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. 
a l c o r dot o r g. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.08 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. Antiwar.com reports after the fighting in Tikrit, Iraq turned its attention to Anbar, but seems to be losing ground to the Islamic State in the area. The real losers are the civilians of Anbar, as the UN reported at least 90,000 were displaced in the last several days. Most of the internally displaced civilians were from the capital city of Ramadi and the surrounding area where the Islamic State has been making major gains in the face of a struggling Iraqi military counteroffensive. Some of the people fleeing Ramadi claim the city was all but empty of non-combatants, which if true would suggest a much bigger number of displaced since the city alone had a population of nearly 500,000 people. While Ramadi has been contested since January of 2014, the city is now almost entirely under control of the Islamic State after a week of fighting, leaving Iraqi officials alarmed and US officials insisting the city was never that important in the first place. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports as many as 700 migrants were feared dead on Sunday after their boat capsized in the Mediterranean, raising pressure on Europe to face down anti-immigrant bias and find money for support as turmoil in Libya and the Middle East worsens the crisis. If the death toll is confirmed, it will bring to 1,500 the total number of people who died this year seeking to reach Europe, a swelling exodus that prompted Europe to downsize its seek and rescue border protection program in a bid to deter them. International aid program strongly criticized the decision. After news of Sunday's disaster, several government leaders called for emergency talks and EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini said foreign ministers would discuss the immigration crisis at a meeting in Luxembourg on Monday. European Council President Donald Tusk said he was considering calling a special meeting of EU leaders, a summit that Renzi had called for earlier. Meanwhile, Italian and foreign ships and helicopters worked into the night to find possible survivors. So far, 28 Eight people have been rescued and 24 bodies recovered, according to Italian authorities. The 20-meter-long vessel sank 70 miles from the Libyan coast south of the Italian island of Lampedusa as a large merchant ship approached it. A survivor told the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, that 700 people were on board, hopeful the ship would save them, move to one side, and toppled the boat. French President Francois Holland said the EU had to do more, telling Canal Plus Television that rescue and disaster prevention efforts needed more boats, more overflights, and a much more intense battle against people trafficking. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the FBI and Justice Department have admitted to overstating forensics evidence results in court in a way that benefited prosecutors in hundreds of trials over more than two decades. The National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers and the Innocence Project are assisting the agency with an internal review of past convictions, according to the Washington Post. The review is ongoing, but it has so far found 26 of 28 examiners in the FBI laboratory's microscopic hair comparison unit have made inaccurate statements in 95% of the 268 trials that have been reviewed so far. Of the 268 trials, 32 defendants were sentenced to death and 14 have been executed or already died. Defendants who are still in prison are being notified of possible inaccuracies in their trials so they can consider appeals. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Saying that he was giving his co-workers at Marley Publishing just a few more days to catch on to him, local mentally unstable man Michael Redding told reporters he planned on exhibiting one or two more warning signs this week before, quote, finally doing this. I think I'll do just a couple of disconcerting things in front of people here at the office, maybe give them a day or two to take action through the appropriate channels. But if that doesn't happen, then I'm going through with it. The fully unhinged Redding, who plans on, quote, making this thing happen sometime next week, claims that despite displaying erratic and worrisome behavior around the office for the past few months, his actions have gone completely unreported by his coworkers. I definitely talked about my frustration with life in general, and I even discussed my fascination with all sorts of violence. But that still didn't throw up any red flags. We'll see if anyone catches on. Mike? I don't know him super well, but he's nice enough. He's quiet and he keeps to himself mostly, but I'm sure he'll come out of the shell. Just a matter of time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. U.S. District Judge... Kimberly J. Muller must be very upset today knowing that people all around the United States are engaging in self-medication of a cannabis variety, it being 420, the uh, worldwide, this global cannabis celebration of one of the most useful plants on the face of the planet. This judge has come out with a ruling just days beforehand saying that the schedule classifications that the federal government has are completely constitutional, she says, even though she also says in the same breath, essentially, that at some point in the future they may be unconstitutional. But not in her court, not at this time, she says. Our toll-free number, if you want to share your thoughts, is 855-450-FREE. But despite her decision all around the country today, people engaged in the use of this drug. They did so safely. They did so, in some cases, under a doctor's orders. In other cases, just because they darn well felt like it. And most everything is okay. Yeah, how many deaths have we heard reported on today because zero. of marijuana because use? Because of marijuana use, zero today, yeah. zero yesterday, zero the years before that that I've been alive. There's never been a death reported from cannabis use. Well, what from, about drinking? Are there any, like, drinking holidays? I can't think of any. Cinco de Mayo is coming up. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, that's yeah. one. Do yeah. we hear about deaths? And, and I'd say it's, uh, even 4th of July. It's almost uh, a guarantee. Independence Day is a uh, drinking holiday. Um, sure. So this, New Year's Eve. This right. lady. Holidays, from... frankly. Um, even <laughs> thanks, All of them. Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas. I'd, I'd say largely both uh, drinking holidays to some extent. Yeah. So this lady is backing a Schedule classification that Schedule 1 says the drugs on the Schedule 1 list have no medical purpose. And she claims that she did a bunch of research 
So she must have missed all of the 20-something states that have medical marijuana programs or believes that they're somehow a scam and that they're all about people getting high instead of actually helping people who need it. Apparently, she didn't take the time to actually watch one single marijuana medical marijuana documentary, which very clearly makes it, uh, makes it obvious that this stuff really helps people. The question on my mind is, are there really two classes of men? Like, does she never encounter regular people or does she completely isolate? by her group of bureaucrats there and must government have, people. But there must have been mar- marijuana smokers at law school. There must have. She, no, I mean now. She must encounter people who are like, hey, you know, you're really wrong on this issue. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know about that. I wonder. Do people, uh, are people cowed by the fact that she's a judge and they don't want to tell her their opinions or are her close friends telling her, what the hell are you thinking? What's going on here? There must be, I mean, does she have dinners with people? Does she ever socialize with normal people? <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe she does. Maybe she socializes with people who smoke marijuana, but she gives them a pass because she feels like they can take care of themselves. Yeah, or like, oh, well, they only smoke at home. I don't want to see people smoke it outside. And, and smoking at home, I think it's like de facto legal in most government people's minds. Like uh, the keen police here, I don't think, or any uh, police officers, they wouldn't. I know they do bust into people's homes uh, for p- marijuana use, but I don't think they, even if they know people who use marijuana, would go into their home and, and bust them. I don't know. Well, I mean, I it guess depends. they do. I'm yeah, wrong. They on have that, done actually, that. I yeah. was in jail with a guy who got popped for an ounce of pot, and he got a Ugh. dealing got a dealing charge. An for ounce. That. Again, I always compare this to coffee. Like, how much coffee do people have in their homes? A Usually a pound yeah. or so. And I got a big ounce, can of it. Yeah, an ounce is just nothing. It's nothing, and it's we're talking about a plant here. We're talking about flowers, and uh, certainly within the Keene Police Department, I think what gives you that feeling is there are officers who personally have a disagreement with the war on drugs. Yeah. That's certainly true. Whether or well, not they would go along with it if they were asked to go on a raid, I suspect they would. And just because of the jail guards that I've encountered, who I yep. assume uh, smoke marijuana. There's more than on, one of them, I suspect, that does. At home, and they feel safe doing that. They don't need it to be legal. Like, oh, well, why, why do you need to to push yeah. this issue. I can smoke at home. It's true. That is an argument that uh, that we've heard. But I like the idea of smoking outside. It's comfortable to smoke outside. I enjoy it when the weather's nice. It's nice to sit out and enjoy a, a puff. And uh, it's my property, and I should be able to do what I want. And even if it's not my property, if I'm walking along the road, as long as I'm not littering, whose business is it whether or not I put some smoke or vapor into my into my lungs? Or what if you want to leave your home? What if you want to go visit your friends? You can bring beers to your friends and keep mm. that in the trunk, but you can't keep marijuana there. Not right now, but in some places that's starting yeah, to Yeah, I guess change. you're right. Yep. So the toll-free number tonight, if you want to share it with us, 855-450-FREE. Dale Geringer, this is from LATimes.com, the director of the California branch of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Law, says the judge's decision could not be appealed until after the criminal case against the growers was resolved and a trial is not expected until late this year or early next year. So this was just a decision on a motion, ultimately, that she went through all of this for. Uh, He says this is on a very slow train, and he said that the judge remarked that much has changed since marijuana's classification, but, quote, a lower court judge has to follow the law, she says. He said last year's hearing showed the dysfunctionality of the current drug laws. Because of marijuana's Schedule One status, federal restrictions make it difficult for researchers to obtain legal cannabis for study, say advocates. The normal rep praised the judge, however, for, quote, having the courage to hear this issue and provide it the careful consideration that it deserves. Boy, wow. he is up her blood Blowing some on this smoke. one. I mean, this is ridiculous, the idea that this judge did anything that was a favor towards, just by, by hearing the issue, she's somehow done people a favor and she should be... Uh, praised for that. I don't think, I just don't think so at all. I think it's, uh, it's just all of it's weak. While we are disappointed with the ruling, it changes little, said Paul Armentano, Normal's deputy director. We always felt this had to ultimately be decided by the Ninth Circuit, and we have an unprecedented record for the court to consider. So they're intending to appeal uh, the decision. Scott Shipman, Southern California chairman of Citizens Against Legalizing Marijuana. Aha. Uh-huh. We knew those groups existed. Interesting to uh, finally hear about one of them. Said that uh, he was pleased with the ruling, but found it disturbing that Mueller had even conducted a fact-finding hearing on the issue. Yeah, we don't need any facts. <laughs> Chipman says, quote, There is a false sense that marijuana legalization is on the move. 
when we are seeing a huge pushback against legalization, particularly in small towns across the country. It is a seriously harmful drug that is much stronger than it was in the 1970s and is getting stronger by the month. Oh my gosh, adjectives. It's stronger. Like, Show me some evidence. Where is it harming people? Well, I think it's stronger, um, but that there is some evidence of that. The, but, no, but I mean, no, is the know. harm getting stronger? No, um, but the, he's just throwing out adjectives, and adjectives are not arguments. They're not facts. He wants to scare people, right? Well, I think that what the the claim is is that this isn't the marijuana that you smoked in 1979, parents or grandparents at that point, um, because. I, I'm a parent and, and not a particularly young parent at this point, and I smoked marijuana uh, when I was in high school. It was from 85 to 89, so and uh, college a little bit after that. So um, And, yeah, I think marijuana is stronger than that, but kids are just smoking less of it. There's a drug people— um, rel- They can smoke less of it. Look, if you wanted to get as high, I could get in There's 1989. Still plenty of people that smoke a lot in of 1989, pot. I could get as high as you could get with your with your most expensive weed now. Is that not correct? If you had correct. some of the best weed in no, 1989. No, I just have to have a large quantity of it. Of it. I, I could just mean. smoke two joints for every half joint you smoke. Fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not like we didn't do that. Gener- I think it's generally true what you're saying, Mark, that people don't have to smoke as much to achieve the same level of high due to the fact that there are higher percentages of THC in, the, in some of the marijuana available today. But that said, that doesn't mean there aren't people who will just sit there and chief on a blunt full of, uh, you know, the chronic. But those, pe- uh, those people long. were chiefing on a blunt before. Or right, that's my point, though. I mean, so this, all I'm saying is what you're saying isn't true across the board. I mean, it's generally true that you don't have to smoke as much because of higher percentages, but there are some people who will smoke as much anyway simply because that's what they do. Right. Well, they just wanted to get they want to get super stoned and they were getting super stoned before by smoking more marijuana. What I'm saying is people still tend to self-regulate on this. Right. I agree that they tend to, but there are exceptions to that rule. Okay. The uh, toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Greg is listening in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Greg, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, responding to one of your videos I've seen on Facebook. You guys told me to call All right, here's what I want you to do, Greg. I don't know what kind of phone you're on, if you're on a headset or a speakerphone or something like that, but if you are, uh, please uh, try to remedy that here in a moment. We're going to come back with you and okay. give you a chance to, uh, to say what you need to. But it's a little warbly. It's a little hard to understand you. And if we can't understand you, it's not a good conversation. So, uh, and Thanks, if, Greg. If possible, uh, Greg, we'll come back to you here, but if possible, connect with us on Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. And it'll be like the clouds have parted. The clouds of marijuana smoke, of course. It's 420, 855-450 free. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2236. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. You are, of course, invited here, toll-free, to take control of the airwaves and bring up whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE, the 420 celebration edition of Free Talk Live. I, having been to said 420 event here on the East Coast in New Hampshire, where uh, probably 50 people at least, maybe as many as 60, perhaps 70, probably at least 70, sort of in and out over the hour and a half that we had uh, they're smoking out in front of the state house, literally right up there in front of the front door. And Mark, I think you pointed this out appropriately that we were within, you know, inches of the front door. I mean, there were people literally standing in front of basically the front door, uh, consuming cannabis openly. In a lot of places, you can't even smoke cigarettes inches from a, an entranceway. That's true. That's a good point. So uh, it was a great day, and there's video. It was raining, so I don't know how much video there is. I only took so much, given that I don't want my camera to break. Uh, because of the the, you know, the precipitation, but I was thinking it would make the video look better because of the overcast day. Like it would make the smoke kind of linger in the crowd. So I would imagine I the pictures you. probably look like better. a battle scene. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we did have a gentleman on the line asked him to uh, try to clear up his line a little bit, and uh, he is gone. So hopefully we'll hear back from Greg here in a little bit. Yeah, we didn't get rid of him. No. Nope. Um, so I'd I'd like to bring it back to the basics on this uh, oh, marijuana well. issue. And I okay. think that's really important. We don't do that quite enough here on Free Talk Live. Is look, I may I, I don't particularly support mind altering substances for other people, right? Like I don't say you support them for you though. <laughs> um, I, I drink red wine, yeah, and I'm not going to pretty de mind deny that uh, that I that I do that. It's one of the most powerful drugs known to man, right. alcohol. But I want to make it clear that I don't particularly support mind altering substances for other people. This is not an advocation yeah. that uh, that you go out and use mind altering right. substances. Mark's but, use of mind altering substances does not mean that you should follow suit. Right, and that's really the point that I'm trying to make here is is that this is like this is about your body and you being able to decide what you do with it. I may or may not advocate, you know, I, I don't particularly want you to go do mind altering substances. Now, if you're going to do them, I'm going to say that marijuana is probably one of the more least uh, less harmful drugs that you can do, and that appears to be, you know, from all the research I've done throughout the past 
decade plus that we've done this program, and prior to that, I have also done a lot of research. You have done a lot of research, from what I can tell. Personal yeah. research. Yeah, yeah, you've you've done a lot of research. <laughs> Personal experimentation. You you you, you, ch- you smoke like a broke microwave. Oh, and- I don't think so. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I would have to say that, uh, that, you know, like this is about self-ownership. If you own your body, you get to decide what substances that you put in it. And if it's your money, you can spend it on what you want. Now, you've got responsibilities. When you don't live up to your responsibilities, you're not a person of your word. And I think that that's, you know, that in and of itself shouldn't be a reason for incarceration, but it should be a reason that you get scolded and you should behave the way you should behave based on what you've promised to do. Let's go to Todd. He's in Tallahassee listening to WVFT. Hello, Todd, and happy 420. Yeah, happy 420 to you guys. Yep, go ahead Um, with your thoughts. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what you're – the – you were talking about the power of the weed today, and it and I, you know, it's approaching thirty percent THC. And the stuff we were smoking in the eighties in high school was, you know, not even ten percent back then. Okay. If you can um, get higher than thirty percent, uh, you can get what the dabs and uh, wax that has higher percentages now. Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and they're can. wonderful. That's, that's, that's I must say, don't drive, don't drive on that though. Um, no, I would not. But, I would say know, not I, to. I'd say 25 years I've been smoking um, every single day. Um, there have been a couple of days here and there where I was it, was it was a nightmare for me. But, you know, other than that, every day for 25 years. Um, just like anything else, I think it can you can you can allow anything to, you know, make you a piece of crap if, if that's what you want to be. Um, sure. But uh, a I loser smoking that- marijuana isn't going to become a winner and vice versa. Is no, also true. Exactly, you're just going to be a stone loser, man. But yeah. um, the, the the I do think that the power of of uh, the pot today, um, I, I noticed personally in myself different effects. I, in, in the past, when I would go a day or two, um, uh, thank you very much. I think I'll do the same. When I would go a day or two without a hit, no bong. I just have a bite. All when right. I would go a day or two without. Smoking, I, I mean, I would have really no ill effects whatsoever, except maybe a little bit of antsiness. You're now, having ill effects nowadays. Just, yeah, a little bit more mm. than more than I did in the past. And I say ill effects; it's just it's mild discomfort, really. It's I don't I don't. Maybe have, you're like, just hold on, hold on. Pain. Why? What is it? You don't mild discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that, that you know, um, when you have a habit for doing anything, you're going to, exactly. uh, you know, you're not going to feel so great when you don't get to do it. If well, I eat ice cream every right. night at 9 p.m. and I don't get my ice cream one night, I'm going to be a little grumpy. That can be true, Mark, but also, yeah, you know, I your body chemistry too. changes, too, over the years. I mean, how yeah. marijuana affected me at age 16, I, I don't think is the same as how right. it affects me today. And, uh, yeah, that and, makes total sense. Right. And so, you know, ha- maybe you shouldn't be buying the high test marijuana. Maybe you should try the cheaper stuff. I mean, you're in Florida there. I'm sure you can still get mids. Yeah, but it tastes, yeah mids and rags, but it tastes like crap. Who wants to deal with that yeah. stuff? And, uh, and when I talk about discomforts, I'm only talking about, you know, my appetite is not as great and it takes me a little longer to fall asleep at night. I mean, that's really it. Um, um, I, I, you know, I other, share those experiences. That, that's probably it. Thanks, yeah. Todd. That's probably because of the ice cream thing you were talking about. I like to eat some ice cream at nine thirty every night too. And if I don't have some pot, I'm not eating the ice cream, so it's just snowballs, man. Yeah, who snowballs. knows where it's really coming from? Thanks, Todd, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Derek, were you saying that your experience was similar? Is it, yeah. has it changed over the years? Or well, what? no, no, not about the the change in um, quality or strain. I've always smoked, you know, as high quality uh, cannabis as I can get, but. The difference is uh, when I don't have it, I do have a harder time falling asleep. And I don't know really? if that was like like a chicken or the egg thing. Like maybe I didn't sleep so well before smoking mm. marijuana and marijuana helps put me to sleep. Uh, or is it that I've gotten used to smoking uh, marijuana before going to sleep and if I don't have it, then I have a harder time falling asleep. So it's, it's just hard to question. say. And uh, same with appetite. These are the two things that he brought up. So, like, marijuana will help me. And I I shouldn't call it marijuana. It's sort of a loaded um, term. But, yeah, cannabis. uh, When I enjoy cannabis, uh, it helps regulate my appetite a lot better um, than if I don't. And it does help me sleep. So, you know, why wouldn't I use this? But you quit smoking cannabis for a period of weeks earlier this year. How many weeks did you go for? I guess it was about a month or so. A month. 
Now, did you notice over that time frame that your sleeping habits changed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, evened out a little bit. It was uh, maybe took about a week for me to go back to homeostasis or okay. where it was like normal again. And um, one of the major changes, the, the biggest thing that I noticed when I stopped smoking cannabis was that I dreamed again. And I don't know if what? other people have this experience, but this is something that happened in jail also because obviously I wasn't smoking cannabis in yeah. jail. Uh, but I started having dreams. I, apparently, you always have dreams, but you don't always remember right. them. Right. Likely, that would experience would go away over time, uh, because what you're doing is basically that means it's fitful sleep if you're remembering. Really? Huh? Mostly what that means. Meaning you didn't get good sleep? You're just If you're remembering your dream, you're usually not sleeping soundly. No, wait a minute. I, I was uh, a dream researcher earlier in my years, uh-huh. and... Uh, the more you practice remembering your dreams, the better you can get at Indeed. it. Indeed. Derek J., Dream Doctor. Maybe a new career. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can talk more about dreams or cannabis or whatever's on your mind. Plus, coming up, a cop targets college students. We'll tell you what it's all about on the way. Free Talk Lab. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturing. If you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. This is novelist Tom Robbins. When my mother was diagnosed with glaucoma, her conservative Virginia physician told her there was only one treatment that might ease her pain and save her eyesight. That treatment was medical marijuana, which he could not prescribe. I offered to get her some and teach her how to use it effectively, but my father objected because marijuana was against the law. So my mother, who loved to read and walk in nature, was condemned to grow cruelly, unnecessarily blind. Tragedies like this happen all the time, but they don't have to keep happening. To learn more about medical marijuana, call the Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or visit them on the web at mpp.org. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. 
the people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you can join us here toll-free on the radio waves. The number is 855-450-FREE as we uh, continue on with this 420 edition of Free Talk Live. Lots of people contributing tonight uh, to the show. Thank you for joining the conversation. We always bring stuff to the table, and I, I hope we get a chance to talk about this cop targeting some college students, Derek J. Uh, but your calls and thoughts come first here. Do want to let you know how to get some of the original alternative currencies. Yes, we love Bitcoin here on Free Talk Live. There's no doubt about it. Um, but I think we all still love gold and silver, right? I mean, if somebody offers to pay oh, you in, yeah. in gold or silver, you'll take it, won't you? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so me too. Uh, go to silver.freetalklive.com. You can get some wonderful hand-picked gold and silver pieces from Midas resources. They've got some great product. I've ordered from there multiple times uh, and you'll be, I'm sure, satisfied. They've been doing this a long time over at Midas. You can call them toll-free at 877-857-9938 or visit silver.freetalklive.com. That's 877-857-9938 or silver.freetalklive.com. Let's continue here. We have Greg. We're going to give him another shot. He called back in on a better line, hopefully. Greg, uh, are you there? Yes, I am. Sounding much better, sir. Where are you calling from tonight? Uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Sorry, I dropped my cell phone in the toilet the other <laughs> night, and the speaker hasn't been the same ever since. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I'd say go ahead and replace that one. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, on my, I'm on my wife's phone now. This one should be better. So. Okay, good. Yeah, go for it. What were you calling about tonight? All right. Well, I just watched a video on Facebook that uh, Free Talk posted a few hours back about a, a guy was calling in endorsing Ted Cruz for president. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember him. Okay, and whatever. And you guys were bringing up about how you were questioning him on that he wanted to crack down on the border, and you guys were kind of giving him a little bit of crap about it. Were you guys playing devil's the advocate there, or is that kind of what you really believe, that people oh, should just be able to come and go as they want across the border? Yeah, I, well, anyone across the border? Um, he, what border? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, if we're talking right specifically oh, about oh, the yeah. border, let me give you my border pitch on this one. I used to be a okay. guy who believed that we needed to do some kind of controlling at the border, um, and that was yep. probably you know a decade ago or something like that. But I came to a conclusion. That conclusion is is that with the giant apparatus we have, with all the fences and the border guards and the helicopters and the dogs and the infrared cameras and all that stuff, we couldn't stop. The United States could not stop 20 million people from coming here illegally. So, and, and frankly, um, at some point in the past, the, I believe it was China was the second uh, country from which people came here illegally. Now, I think that those numbers have changed and it's much more c concentrated on Central America. But what it shows right. is that it, even a natural barrier like the Pacific Ocean couldn't prevent illegal immigration. So if I was to re, uh, to you know re allow more people in and just say, hey, everybody can get a green card that checks in, the vast majority of people would check in and get a green card, right? They'd say, oh, well, we'd yep. love to get this uh, you know this legal way to work or whatever. But the people I want to keep keep out, let's uh, let's call them murderers and people with drug resistant tuberculosis. Um, and that let's, was my point. Yeah, yeah. So you're probably addressing my point before I even bring it yeah. up. So. I, I'm, I'm excellent at this because I've, uh, you know, I've done it. I've yeah, but done, in order to are, keep those people out, you have to have some sort of bureaucracy. You have to have the and, same bureaucracy to keep those people out. They are res remarkably small percentage of the population, and that same bureaucracy couldn't prevent 20 million people from coming here. So the idea is to somehow pare down the bureaucracy and that it'll be more efficient. Not in this case, it won't. You might as well just let the people who are murderers and have drug-resistant uh, uh, tuberculosis has come across the border because they're coming anyway. Like there's, you can't say that there's no murderers who've been coming from Central America into the United States. They haven't been uh, very effective at stopping them. Well, the only way to stop it is with a total police state, and I'm I'm sorry, I'm not interested in that. Are so you? That's, that's my point, okay. Greg. No, I totally get what you're saying. I guess what I was, I thought you were basically calling just for, just let them come, which I which I really have no problem with. I mean, I believe in freedom. I just thought my problem is when people are undocumented for cases of 
you know, someone here commits a crime and such, how do you even know they exist in this country if they're not documented? You know what I mean? There's lots of but people, is, but Americans are. I mean. I'm sorry. Americans are undocumented as far as the police, uh, the the policing a- agencies are until you've been arrested the first time. So, I mean, if you've never been um, arrested, Greg, the cops don't really know you exist either. Okay, so no, I've never actually been arrested. You yeah. know, I, I think I did like uh, I was in a drunk tank once. You know, back in my teen years. Then, years, then they know who you are. <laughs> let's say I wasn't. Okay, and let's just say I got pulled over. Let's say I got a hit and run, and I uh, hit somebody drunk driving, and I fled the scene. Okay. Yep. Are you telling me there's no way they could find me since I've never been arrested? I'm not in some sort of legal system here. Well, um, you'll be, you're in the system. I mean, if you've got a driver's right, license. Right, if you've got a driver's whatever. license, if they could, if they had your license plate, they would be able to do it. Unless you had some kind of situation where you didn't have, you know, the, the car you were driving wasn't registered to you. But let's be clear on something. Most of the people coming to the United States from wherever it is they're coming from, they would like to have documentation. Like they, the, Just like most people, it makes it easier to get bank accounts and things like that if you oh, have right, right. Uh, identification. It's just that they're not allowed to uh, because, you know, then they have to start right. getting into this crazy system with all of its rules and restrictions and the application fees and the waiting and the immigration bureaucrats. The fact that they make up social security numbers show that they want social security numbers. Yeah. Greg, oh, anything right, else you yeah. want to share? No, I guess you guys addressed my point pretty good. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you, dude. Sir. Thanks for calling back. Appreciate the extra effort uh, in calling in tonight. And yeah, get rid of that other phone. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Toll free number is 855 453. I have dropped a phone in the, the toilet once before. I managed yeah. to actually salvage that one. Did you? Amazingly. Yeah. Open, I opened it what up. What kind was it? It was way back in the day. Nokia? This was, probably, this was no, oh, I don't the think old I ever Nokia? had a, yeah, yeah, I had one of those. would survive a nuclear really? apocalypse. <laughs> I don't think this was anything special. I think it was probably just like a Samsung flip phone back in the year 2001 or something like that. But I opened that I had a flip up. phone that I could kind of flip over like a, a Star Trek uh, yeah. receiver thing. And like I'd do it with one hand and then answer it. Sure. Like did just it, flip it, did a it knife break out. off? No, no. I mean, it was a sturdy little sturdy. thing. Wow. I think it was Kyocera. So all I did was took the phone apart. Uh, you know, I happened to have a small screwdriver, and I literally let it dry underneath a light for a day or whatever. Cool. And it started working after that. It should, as long as you can get in there and keep the corrosion out, yeah. And I rinsed it, by the way, first before I did that. Yeah, I was so. going to ask about that, <laughs> just to let you know. Uh, so, hey, let's go to Nathan. He's in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. Happy 420, guy. Uh, hey, guys. yeah. Thanks. Um, I want to talk about those videos that Derek J said he was going to upload. Now, there's all which ones? No, they're already you, uh, they're already uploaded. They're on freekeen.com. Oh. You talking about oh, the okay. the triple parking ticket trial? Uh, yeah, actually, I checked your YouTube channel, Derek J, and I didn't see them on there because it's so on the Free I Keen channel. Ian's a step ahead okay. of me. <laughs> um, the main problem that I've had with these court videos is that there's a lot of echo in the background. I believe there was one called Ian on trial for victimless crimes. I think it was the driving driver's license one. Mm-hmm. I couldn't make out anything that the judge or anybody was saying. It was it, it was very it can be hard. But yeah. This problem is going to be corrected, Nathan, at least in Keene, because we've, we've discovered that the new courthouse actually has audio uh, jacks. So yeah. hopefully we'll be able to plug into these things. I keep forgetting to bring the cable. To we've got the them, court. though. We're audio guys. <laughs> So hopefully the audio will improve in the future videos, Nathan. Well, I am excited to view these videos. It's just like I said, they're uh, they've had some of the worst audio quality of any of the videos up on Freaking. Well, you're talking YouTube about channel, the DMV so. hearing. Um, it looked like the courtroom with Judge Burke in it. Oh, really? So, um, okay. Yeah, and there was another one where it's better now, in my opinion, than it ever it. was. I mean, because in this courtroom. They they actually have amplification. The old courtroom here in Keene was a essentially it's the city council chamber where the judge has a desk up there, and it's like the most basic kind of non courtroom courtroom. And now they actually have a proper courtroom where the judge gets to sit up high, and you know he's got pews. <laughs> they never had that before in Keene, New Hampshire, up until the last year or so. And along with that, there is an actual microphone system that has. Uh, a speakers so the audience gets more sound now than we ever did and i still boost the levels up like 20 decibels and i understand that there is a lot of noise in the background but it, it is what it is something ian you should start doing this is uh you should do you, things Ian. i'm gonna tell you well how to do your job okay yes. you always film in the back center and yeah. that's good. You can get a whole view of everything that's going on. That's where they instructed me to that's film. That's where they back used to the tell day. you you had to be. But since then, I've started just going right up to the front yeah. and moving off to the side. That's where the speakers actually are. So you get good sound that way mm-hmm. and you get a closer view. And the bailiffs haven't given us any trouble about it. So why don't you move up? Yeah, I should do that. 
Well, I'm sure uh, the bailiffs are dying to, uh, to to have you moving closer to their their beloved judge. Yeah, I'm sure. Nathan, um, thanks for the uh, critique. Appreciate the well, call tonight. Thank you. 855-450. Freeze the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. Uh, you can bring up anything that you want here. It's also, there's some things that are a little more convenient about being in the back. There's more space yeah. to have a big tripod and things like that. Uh, but if we want the sound jacks, we'll, we'll have to be up front for those. Mm -hmm. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Ron Paul here. Today, I have an urgent message for every American who's retired or thinking about retiring soon. You see, our own government's disastrous policies have now put you, me, and everyone over the age of 50 at great risk. Sometime in the near future, we're going to have yet another financial crisis. This one won't be solved with bailouts, and it will hit seniors the hardest. I fear there will be civil unrest, a drop in stock prices, pension fund collapses, big changes to Social Security and Medicare, the erosion of personal liberties, bank and brokerage closings, and ultimately a major crisis as the U.S. dollar is rejected for almost any non-paper alternative. Don't let this happen to your retirement. Dr. Ron Paul strongly believes when the next crisis hits, there will be no warning and the government won't save you. Go online to www.ronpaulwarning10.com where you'll learn simple steps you can take to protect your retirement. Go to www.ronpaulwarning10.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows you can't afford to wait so call 866-91-STEEL lock in your price now call 866-91-STEEL that's 866-917-8335 So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm
Free Talk Live. You're welcome to dial in toll-free. Share anything you want with us here tonight. The 420 edition of Free Talk Live continues here. 855-450-FREE. What happened where you are? Were you involved in it? Was there some sort of a, a protest or a mass smoke out today? If so, where was it and how'd it go? You can share your thoughts with us. If not tonight, tomorrow night we'll be here every single night this week. Uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Derek J., I think we might just have time to get the story in about the bad cop who's targeting young people, targeting easily victimized people for abuse and extraction Not of, just any people. of money. This is a black cop targeting white kids. Okay. And so says the headline. Black cop says he framed college students. Wow. T- targeted white boys because, quote, they're easy to intimidate. Yeah, maybe true. From the Associated Press in Philadelphia, a disgraced ex-police officer testifying against his drug squad colleagues acknowledged Tuesday that he stole drug money, planted evidence, and lied on police paperwork too many times to count. Wow. I believe it. His name, Jeffrey Walker, and he told jurors that Philadelphia Police Department drug squad Targeted white college boy khaki pant types <laughs> who were, quote, easy to intimidate. That matches the description of some of the drug dealers who have testified at the six-week police corruption trial mm. that the squad stole as much as $110,000 at a no, that's time. That's nothing. <laughs> at a time. Okay. During violent no-warrant raids. Wow. Lead defendant Thomas Lisiardello always got a cut of the stolen money while this the others cop. yes yeah. while the others split jobs they had worked Walker said <laughs> the city's police brass often celebrated the squad's work with splashy news conferences to announce large seizures sure quote they liked that as far as those bosses and supervisors were concerned it made them look good it was nothing but a dog and pony show walker <laughs> testified more than 160. You don't, find, you don't find news like this every day. No, where's this coming from? I might have missed Associated that. Press. Okay, AP, gotcha. More than 160 drug convictions have been overturned since Woo. Walker pleaded guilty, and the others were named in a 26 count indictment. Wow. Scores of civil rights lawsuits are pending over the arrests. <laughs> this is Chicago. No. Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. Philly, I'm sorry. Police Commissioner Charles Ramsey has voiced his disgust with the squad's alleged crimes while continuing his effort to clean out and reform the 7,000-member department. Oh, I'm sure it's real sincere. Yeah. <laughs> Walker, 46, said he stole money first as a uniformed patrolman when he chased a dealer into a house and spotted a large bag of cash mm. on top of a refrigerator. Who could resist? I had never saw that much money. I was a young kid, Walker told jurors. I took some money and nice. put it in my jacket pocket. Why not? I mean, why not? You really can't blame somebody for it. I understand. Well, you can blame you know. them for it, but you could you could also say that this is likely human nature, yeah. right? Like I mean, this is human nature. I'm not saying it's okay. I, it's certainly not okay that he's going into someone's home and violating their privacy and taking anything that's but theirs. Once you're there, but once you're there and you've got the so-called authority, and otherwise it's just going to go to the uh, if if someone else confiscates it, if some other cop walks in the it's same just going room, to the bureaucracy, it's just going to go to the government's uh, you know overhead or whatever. You're not going to see a dime of that money if you don't take some and put it in your own pocket. Defense lawyers have attacked his credibility and will no doubt (laughs) point out on cross-examination Wednesday that the times he admits acting alone, even before he joined the elite undercover drag unit, I mean drug unit, (laughs) he also said he developed a drinking problem and became forgetful. Uh oh. Oh. Walker has nearly 24 years in when he was arrested in an FBI sting in 2013. Wow, he was a real veteran. Been doing that for a long time. Been stealing a lot of money. Yeah. He was making $119,000 a year and officially padded overtime for court yep. appearances and, and undercover That's a lot work. of padded overtime. And don't forget all the benefits that go into it. These sure. benefit packages aren't what you and I get. They're not getting 401ks, they're getting pensions. They're not getting you know, this uh, matching insurance and that sort of thing. They've got dental, optical, and the Cadillac oh, yeah. plan. 
They've got it all. This man was getting compensated upwards of a quarter million dollars a year if you include sort of uh, the all benefits. The pennies. Right, the, the, the Social Security the government had to pay in. They had to pay an additional 7.5% he didn't get into his paycheck. But it wasn't enough. He needed more, had to take more. Yeah, and then yeah, plus the extra money. So in one of the more memorable assignments, his partner leaned drug suspect Michael Cassioli over a high-rise balcony to elicit the passcode for his <sighs> Palm Pilot. Oh, my. City police officials later held a news conference to announce that the 2007 search had yielded more than $1.5 million in marijuana and psychedelic mushrooms and hmm. about half a million dollars in cash. Federal prosecutors now say the squad raid raided the apartment before they got a warrant. So this is not a good guy. He doesn't follow the no. rules. Uh, and I, he's I'm not, not the surprised. Only one. I'm not surprised he's singing like a canary now. I mean, he's ratting out his whole department yeah. here. Um, he's probably looking to get reduced sentence by sure. how many guys are going down. I mean, that's one detail right. I haven't gotten from the story is how many of other how many of the defendants are there here that he's testifying against. I mean, the, this is the whole drug squad, right? Yeah. This yeah. is like the elite drug unit in the, uh, Philly. Yeah, the one thing I don't understand about why the system doesn't work is is the prosecutors certainly are going to look good here. Uh, this is, you know, this is a big story, and it's going to blow up all over the place. So these prosecutors are going to look like they're ferreting out the bad ones, mm -hmm, yeah. um, and that's going to be good for their career. Why don't more of them do this? I don't know the answer. Because there's so many bad ones. I mean, a lot of the prosecutors are on the take and corrupt as well. So I why would they? Why would the prosecutor generally go against the police department? I mean, the, really, these stories always make me wonder. What went wrong? Because there was a story... Incentives. The, st the whole thing is wrong from the very beginning. Well, no, no, no. What I mean is what went wrong, like, why did the, uh, the why did it all go bad? Because it was going so well for a long time for oh, these yeah, guys. Yeah. I mean, they were raking in the dough. They're a robbing quarter left, century. <laughs> robbing right, robbing all over the place. You, you have to wonder, who did they cross? Someone who, at the FBI, apparently. Well, either someone in the FBI or someone within the department who tipped off the FBI. Right. But there's somebody who, because the FBI isn't just on their own volition likely going to un uncover no. things like this. It's going to probably be based on somebody giving them a tip. Or maybe there's some new guy at the FBI who thinks he's going to bring justice to the force. I, anyway, in another episode, listen to this. Yeah. Walker admitted carrying a heavy safe full of drug money down 17 flights of stairs oh, wow. to avoid being seen on the elevator security camera. Yeah. That's dedication. He just, right. He described it. Well, he actually earned that one. He described <laughs> another heist when he stuffed so much uh, bundled cash into his police vest that he had to wear <laughs> his partner's police vest to cover up the bulges. He agreed to cooperate. Wow. After the FBI caught him, here's your answer. Uh, the FBI caught him stealing fifteen thousand dollars from a suspect. Oh, so it's just a piddly one, uh, and planting drugs in his car. He's been in custody planting ever since. Drugs. Yeah, but how did they just catch him doing that? Is the FBI regularly uh, testing these major departments? I see. I don't know if it's the FBI, but I see in Philadelphia a lot of Department of Homeland Security vehicles. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Fed vehicles. I can imagine they all just kind of patrol the same areas. And if you see some uh, cop. Like planting evidence. I mean, how could? I guess they could look the other way. I suppose it's... you know. I don't know how the FBI works. Obviously, I mean, I, it's not unbelievable that they would have some sort of investigative unit that checks on these yeah. other departments. But it's more likely that somebody snitched him out. It's more likely that one of the other guys in the drug squad, or you know, somebody else uh, who knew what he was doing and wanted to get him in trouble, rolled on him quietly, and then he ends up rolling on a bunch of other people, and so on and so oh, forth. Oh, he's screwing his whole department here. He's uh, He's been in custody ever since, and is hoping to avoid a life sentence yeah. through his testimony. So his, his partner, uh, Lee Ciardello, warned squad members not to change their spending habits so dramatically that they attracted attention, and the other ex-squad members... Yeah, they uh, have to their go out and start buying BMWs left and right. Yeah, well, he says uh, he once worked with this this partner, Lucy Ardello and Reynolds, but was ostracized as he went through a divorce, weight loss, surgery, and other personal problems. Uh, so I guess their partnership sort of split, and he doesn't mind squealing on the guy. He probably crossed him a little bit. Where's the story come from again? Uh, Associated AP. Press. And uh, Walker wrote, uh, you're a rat, and I hope you die. I will have you locked <laughs> up by midnight. Goodbye, loner. Yeah, um, Rat basically says, what you're saying is true, and I don't like it. <laughs> Jeff's in Elgin, Illinois. Jeff, you got the last 20 seconds or so. Go ahead. Okay, so here's how cops can be 
obsolete in Chicago today, I believe it was. Um, an Uber driver was shot at, and he shot back. He had one of those concealed carry things, and he, uh, I guess they said he was from Little Italy, so don't mess with people from Little Italy. Yeah, generally just not a good idea to mess with people carrying guns. Never considered even doing that. But uh, we're out of time, Jeff. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, Self-defense, very important. Can't expect the police to be there when, you know, you need something. you got to be able to take care of it. When seconds count, police are just minutes away. And we're out of time for tonight. Check out Derek J on his website, thederekj.com. And don't forget, freetalklive.com. We'll come back with more tomorrow. And enjoy the remainder of your 420. Because we are smothering in spam, please do not reply to all when you can instead reply. I was recently among over a hundred invited to a corporate reunion. It's always a warm affair, and that's the problem. Enthusiasm for our upcoming get-together caused many recipients to RSVP the organizer with a cheery reply to all. I can't wait. Then others piled on with a reply to all to that. Then the, I'm out of my office now, auto responders joined in. So I replied to all, asking that we all reply only to the organizer. Hey, at least I tried. One invitee, apparently retired, shot back, point taken, but I really like seeing the responses since they're so positive. Smiley face. This better be an open bar. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.08 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,198 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $226. Antiwar.com reports after the fighting in Tikrit, Iraq turned its attention to Anbar, but seems to be losing ground to the Islamic State in the area. The real losers are the civilians of Anbar, as the UN reported at least 90,000 were displaced in the last several days. Most of the internally displaced civilians were from the capital city of Ramadi and the surrounding area where the Islamic State has been making major gains in the face of a struggling Iraqi military counteroffensive. Some of the people fleeing Ramadi claim the city was all but empty of non-combatants, which if true would suggest